Friday. Let me hit it for you, motherfuckers. Hit it for Super Saiyan Joku. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable uh, pair of ultra soft. Uh, 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 That song's been in your ear. I gotta put it up for download so you guys can download it. Straight from the underground. I was gonna rap on top of it. I had lyrics and everything. Uh, and I said, nah, fuck all that shit. <laughs> I got lazy. I just haven't rapped in a long time. I don't know. I didn't know if my verse was too good or not, so I didn't even bother with it. Anyways, uh, here, cheers, Gomer, for you for being here and shit. Here you go. Let me hit it for you. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers, Gomer! Hope you all been okay. I've had the shittiest week of the year! The whole fucking year! Has it barely been starting and shit? Uh, I was really fucking sick. Everything's been going... Everything's been... Been fucked. You guys, I need y'all to pray for me. I, I need you to pray for my health. It's the only thing I have left. They've taken everything. They've taken my job, my money, my women, my self-respect, my decency. Uh, the only thing I have left is my health. And it's slowly, slowly fading away. Pray for the Son of Man! He needs your prayers! Hey, watch out everybody, the COVID's out there. I think I think I I think I had it. I had fever for two, three days, and I was real, real fucking sick. And then a bunch of other bad stuff happened to me during the week. Ah the the, the hits just keep on coming. Anyways. I'm not gonna fucking uh, uh, be here dabbling in shit. It's Friday. I wait all week for this day. So I can drink, smoke with my friends. The Woke Pack. Cheers! Motherfuckers. That's how we do it. We do what it is that we do on this channel. Uh, We do currently have three channels, as I've stated before. This is the Underground Broadcast. We are going to have... Uh, the motherfucking, uh, el mer oh, no, this is the emergency underground broadcast channel. I think we have, uh, two more weeks, and then we can finally stream on the main channel. Maybe we can get more than three people watching and shit. We used to get, like, at least six or seven motherfuckers at, at one point. You know what I'm saying? The biggest show we have was the when the old podcast ended. We had tons of people live. We had like 60 people live watching the Death of Dudes podcast. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, this is currently the emergency broadcast where we, we broadcast when we're banned from the regular one. And look out for the illegal underground broadcast because this Sunday, May 26th, we're going to be watching AEW Double or Nothing. If WWE wouldn't be a sellout and do their pay-per-views in fucking other countries where they fucking show the shit during the day when motherfuckers gotta work, we'd be watching WWE pay-per-views. Uh, but no, we haven't. We're not gonna watch those Saudi Arabias and shit. Uh, so yeah, so Sunday, double or nothing. I think we're gonna start around six. Is when we'll start and shit. I don't think the pay-per-view starts till seven, but at six is the pre-show. We'll be here drinking it up, chilling, and then uh. Oh, yeah, I'll keep Melissa in my mind. 
Uh, uh, Gober, don't worry, bro. The final surgery, that means Ashley's almost out of the way. So cheers. We'll keep, we'll keep our mind, human fellow, the woke packs out there. Uh, join us this Sunday, double or nothing. The link will be on the main channel tomorrow. The link. Uh, and then Sunday, of course, the link will be there on the main channel. If you go, that's where it is. Uh, I am not streaming any of the pay-per-views on the main channel. It's going to strictly stay on the illegal underground broadcast. And we might even watch the Tyson versus Paul fight. Whenever the fuck it happens. Couldn't get tickets. I couldn't even. I tried to get a job as an usher. You know? They didn't. They, I, I told them they were being racist. It's because I'm proud and wearing makeup. Motherfuckers. They want to give me a job and shit. Oh, do we have all the positions or fool? Fuck you. Equal opportunity, my ass. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers like me are always excluded off of that shit. And then they're down here, down the road and shit. In 15 minutes, I can drive down, down there and shit. But no, no, no. I could be a seat filler, I told him. I'll sit there when somebody gets up. You know? John Krinsiski, when he gets up to go piss, I'll go and sit next to Emily Blunt and his kids. Oh, yeah, television. Jim's wife. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Anyways, keep an eye out for that ass. You know how that is. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, I'm going to open a new beer. I don't know if I'm going to drink a lot tonight, fellas. I've been, I've been, uh... I think today was the first day I felt sort of okay. I've been getting really bad heartburn too. Piss me off. Uh, getting old sucks. You know, it's like, I hate to even say this, but some people, they die too fast and too young. Lucky bastards. Some of us, we suffer for years and years with pains and aches here and there, not knowing what's going on because we can't afford to go to the fucking... Uh, to get insurance and Joe Biden's economy. So we just put up with pains here and there. And, oh, oh, something. Uh, oh, that's all right. It'll go away here in a few minutes. And it goes away and shit. And you suffer. You suffer for years and years and years. You know, until you fucking die. But some of us take a long time to fucking die, man. Sucks ass. So cheers to everybody. Uh, pray for our health. Everybody's health. Cheers. Let's get with the comments because there's a lot of comments, I think, here at the end. Uh, oh, yeah, social medias. Officially, it's called X now. So on X, uh, at Sunderman665. On an Instagram is at the under, underscore underground underscore broadcast. That's for the IG. And we're no longer uploading the TikTok. If you want to go to our TikTok, you can go. It's the underground broadcast, but I'm done. Overnight, my videos went from getting 300 views to getting five or six. Fuck you. They shadow banned us. They muted a lot of my videos because they didn't like what I was saying. Motherfuckers. Then they say I cannot poke Kanye's wife walking around naked and shit. Everyone else posts their pictures of her ass. Why can't I? Sons of bitches. Pisses me off. Fuck you. TikTok. Anyways, I hope Joe Biden fucking gets you the fuck out of this country. I'm tired of it. I'm just gonna put it like that. X all the way. Cheers, Elon Musk. <laughs> Give us a discount on the Starlink so we can have fast internet beyond this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Elon Musk, hit us up. We need a sponsor. A rich one. You dick. Anyways, let's start with the comments, and we're going to start uh, oh, with Carlin, Carlin, Colin Larson, this motherfucker, this, this fucking army Beretta motherfucker. I remember this guy. He says, where's the live show, fool? I explained to him what's been happening. Two more weeks, we'll be up there in the main channel. This is a, the motherfuckers that used to watch us. Now they're confused. They're saying, well, he's posting the videos on Saturday, but where's the live show? I used to come out here and fuck around in the live show. Yeah, you know, it's what's been going happening when we get banned and we show stuff we're not supposed to be showing. Tonight, I'm going to show the Furiosa because I saw it. You're going to spoil it for all of you motherfuckers. So you don't have to go watch the movie. Shit. So hopefully we don't get banned for that. 
I don't want to have to re-upload another video after I just spent six hours fucking editing it and shit. Anyways. Why is this on top chat? Put it on, on live chat, motherfucker. There you go. Always, always trying to fuck us over, YouTube. Motherfuckers. Anyways, cheers, Colin Larson. We miss you. We'll see you in a few weeks. You'll finally see the link there coming out, man. It's just pissing me off. There's a lot of people missing out on the live broadcast because we got banned on the main channel. We can't get banned anymore, man. We'll, we'll lose the channel and we're fucked. Anyways. Uh, oh, some guy named Big, Big, I think it's Big Guy, Big Guy 617. It's either Big Guy or it's Bye Guy, which is even better. Cheers! <laughs> I think it's Bye Guy. On the X-Ming 97 actually sucks. And actually, I make this video before we even saw the series. This was like when they showed the first trailer and I ripped it apart. He says, Bishop was there in the time fugitives. And when Apocalypse tried to take over the axis of time, I remember that. I agree his inclusion on the team wasn't enough for a few episodes. He was only there to make the birth of Nathan Cable make sense, which is stupid. Yeah, I kept complaining when we were when I started reviewing uh, by guy. When I started reviewing the actual fucking series... By episode two, I was saying, like, why is Bishop there? He doesn't even say anything. He just stands in the background, just standing there, like, oh, oh, the only time he fucking does anything is, like, when there's a fight. Oh, okay, when there's a fight, bring the black guy so he can beat some people up. Fuck you, Marvel. And then it made sense in episode three, when Nathan was sent to the future, they're like, oh, Bishop is here. We can just send him with him, coincidentally. Fuck you. That didn't all make sense and shit. I don't know. I think that was the only fuck-up, the main fuck-up that I saw. There. The first two episodes were lame. And that 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 was a huge fuck-up that I didn't like. And you know what? I didn't complain about it, but I should have. The very last episode. Nothing that happened should have happened. Like, because the solution was simple. The asteroid was falling to Earth. Ah, oh, and they couldn't stop it. All the X-Men were trying to stop it and shit. And uh, it took Magneto to wake up out of his coma and ass. They have Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler could have just transported the whole asteroid further into space. Away from crashing into Earth. So, <laughs> they fucked up there. They have a mutant that can just teleport anything, including the car he's in. If he's inside of an asteroid, just move the asteroid and shit. Poof it. <laughs> A lot of people don't know in the comic books, they explained a long time ago, but when Nightcrawler does that bamf or he disappears and shit, and that cloud of smoke, you know, he leaves behind, it smells like ass. <laughs> no one's ever said anything. Everybody's like, it was, uh, I forget what episode, what, what, I have the comic book because I even I was like, what the fuck? They were saying, like, uh, it smells like sulfur every time he leaves. <laughs> and the reason he does that is because. They revealed it, Jonathan Hickman, is that every time Nightcrawler uh, transports or teleports, he actually tra uh, teleports through in between a dimension and then back to Earth. But he does it so fast that he actually never even realized that's what he was doing. And the, the dimension he, he actually transports to before he transports back to Earth is the, it's like a, a hell dimension. <laughs> Everything's on fire. It's like, and that's why when he fucking boofs and shit, the it smells like sulfur, like because it's hell and ass. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a hell dimension. I think the the X Men at one point were hiding in uh, when they were fighting the the was it the oh my god I'm such a fucking comic nerd because I have them. They were fighting the. Uh, what are they called? The Inhumans. They were fighting the Inhumans, and they were hiding. They were because the Inhumans were were winning and shit. And there were the X Men. There were fewer X Men, and there was this cloud that was traveling to Earth. And if you touched the cloud, the mutants would die and shit. Cyclops died. It was crazy. Um, this was before Jonathan Hick Hickman rebooted everything. Um, but 
they were hiding in that dark dimension. Night tr Nightcrawler transported and, and Magic. Nightcrawler and Magic transported everybody to this hell dimension. And that's where they were hiding. The X-Men. An ass. All right. Bye, guy. I got really nerdy with you. So cheers. Thank you for commenting. All right. Uh, all the motherfuckers over here. Fucking motherfucker. Um. <coughs> J Hart W. Uh, on the underground broadcast, uh, he put a laughing emoji, and he puts "Son of Man" out of context. Um, and then uh, this is what he wants me to play. So here you go, because it's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm hot as fuck and skinny, and I'm gonna beat your ass." All right, that you know what? I was gonna get mad because he's trying to fucking quote me on this and shit. Uh, but he did put right there out of context. So I get yeah, yeah, I give it to you, motherfucker. I mean, yeah, when you hear it like that, it sounds fucking weird. Let me play it again because it's gonna be like, oh, I'm hot as fuck and skinny, and I'm gonna beat your ass. I was talking about <laughs> Caitlin Denver or Dever or Denver or some shit like that, who's gonna be Abby Smash, and that bitch is just as skinny as me and sec as sexy as me too, little waist like me, shit. They wanted to be Abby Smash. It's gonna be weird, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, motherfucking Rocco and you put there a good idea, son of a bitch. Fuck you, Rocco. Satanist. Anyways, cheers, J Hart W. Thank you for commenting, you guy. <coughs> Alright, let's see. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this Satanist. Uh, where is this thing? Uh, here it is. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. All right, cheers, Rocco. Uh, son of a bitch. He puts hashtag son out of context and he puts a laughing emoji. All right, let me show you what Rocco wanted me to play here. If you ain't gonna take the risk of getting AIDS and dying, why are you even doing it in the first place, you pussies? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about Stormy, Stormy Daniels makes all the guys use condoms to fuck her in the porn. That's a bullshit. That's a, that shouldn't be considered porn. That should be considered like women, like softcore and shit. We're using condoms. Fuck you. That's not real porn. All right. It's gotta be raw. <laughs> Cheers, Rocco, you dick. I love you. All right, let's see. This one freaked me out because at first I thought it was somebody trolling. But it's a new, I want to say new old account. I'll just put it like that. He explains it, I guess. But here's his new account. The trumpets will sound 2024. The trumpets, y'all. He's back. Uh, let's see. Let's see what he's been up to. Son of a bitch. Uh, he goes. Uh, oh yeah, you know how we do in this channel. So here we go. What's up, muchacho? Sorry I've been absent, but my character has been under huge scrutiny. No worries, I know true Americans like Gomer Kyle in Houston, Texas, very own Joe Cool can see past these slanderous accusations. Also, my old account has been blocked from commenting on YouTube. Due to this, I may have played a part in getting you past 600 subscribers. Congratulations, son of man. On this triumphant achievement, America is proud. Anyhow, cheers, amigo. Hashtag woke pack for life. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's my two cents. Son of man out of context. Hey, didn't the president fuck your wife? Cheers! <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> the fucking trumpets is, is, is fucking son of man out of context. Here's what he said. Hey, didn't the president fuck your wife? <laughs> oh that was so good bro i'm glad you're back i was wondering because we went like almost a month we didn't hear from this motherfucker i said oh shit maybe it really is trump 
And he's busy with the trial? He hasn't had time to comment here? <laughs> it turns out his fucking shit has been blocked. <laughs> he shouted out Gomer and fucking Joe Cool as always. Him motherfucker. It sounds great. I found a better AI. I think this AI is better than the last one I was using. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this one's good. Hey, cheers, trumpets! Thank you for fucking uh, representing and hollering. Live, motherfucker! Cheers. Light a doobie for you, motherfucker. Anthony Timmons, oh yeah. Timmons, on the MCU's Wilson Fisk has a problem. He says, they should have left Daredevil, The Punisher, and Luke Cage, Jessica Jones on Netflix. They did it right. Now they turned him into a bunch of simps. Kevin Feige sucks ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I don't know, man. I mean, I don't want to judge it yet. Even though I have been, <laughs> uh, I don't want to judge it too much because um, Kevin Feige has said that his favorite comic book characters are Daredevil and the Silver Surfer. So that uh, kind of gives me some hope that he's taking care of this show. Uh, but this whole thing about two seasons were shot already, 19 episodes. He fired everybody. He threw everything away and they filmed nine reshoots nine episodes it just sounds like bad like it 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 sounds bad already because we've seen what you what what has been fed to us when that situation occurs because that happened with echo and that's happened with other movies it's happening right now with captain america part four uh so yeah it's happening with all these movies they're just pushing them back and pushing them back because kevin feige's like this is ass this is ass and then he goes and he tries to fix it and it turns out to be even more ass. Uh, it's, it's Lucas all over again. This is Ka Kathleen Kennedy fucking up Lucas. Uh, Kevin Feige's lost his... He's lost... I don't know. I keep my fingers crossed, you know, because like I said, he says Daredevil's his favorite character, so... Maybe, maybe, maybe this might be good. Let's just hope. Cheers, Anthony Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Cheers. Take small gulps. Ah, oh, Jess Rivers. On the Diddy. The Diddy thing keeps getting worse. He or she or they, them, says, This man is sick and disgusting. Yeah, well, Diddy. Wait a minute. Are you talking about Diddy or are you talking about me, motherfucker? You need to be more specific because that sounds like you could be talking about me too. You dick. <laughs> this man is sick and disgusting. Cheers! <laughs> A little late on the DJ horn there. Fucking up. Uh, thank you, Jess, for commenting. Whatever you may be. Uh. Oh, culture war bandit. I, this guy's name is canceled for life. Uh, don't forget now. Uh, let me hit her for this fucking uh, racist. Here we go. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. How do we know that Adam and, and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three <laughs> things that a black man can't get? A black eye, <laughs> a fat lip, and a job. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. Uh, on the Black Samurais are here. Canceled says Assassin's Creed's franchise has lost its way. They've ruined it by killing off Desmond and de deviating from the modern day story. Also, what happened to the sages? So many drop plot points, and now it's all lost and makes no sense. They ruined the story with Valhalla. It's time for a reboot. Um, yeah. Because, oh my god, look. 
I got into this game from... When did I originally start playing it? I started playing it when Assassin's 3 came out. The one, the American Revolution with Connor. That That's my favorite game. Out of all the franchise, that's my favorite game. Above all of them. Um, But it was about to come out. And I was excited because I, I the, the trailers looked amazing. And so I wanted to get it. And I, and I pre-ordered it and everything. And so before it came out, I wanted to get familiarized with the franchise. And so, you know, luckily GameStop has used game. GameStop has used games. And when I went to go buy the Assassin's Creed Part 1, the guy at the register, because I smelled like weed, he's like, oh, you still, you smell good. I'm like, yeah, I smell token out and shit. And he's like, hey, will you go on break? And he goes, man, there's no one here. I can go on break right now. And let's smoke a joint. And we were outside of the store smoking and shit. And I was telling him that I had pre-ordered and I was going to play the whole games. And he says, hey, if you beat the game in like five or six days and return it before seven days, whatever you paid for the used game, like if you even even paid 30 bucks, we'll give you that exact same amount back. And he goes, but it has to be within seven days. It's no one knows. And I was all like, I could beat a game in seven days. Fuck it. <laughs> so I beat Assassin's Creed 1, uh, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed, uh, because basically part two had three games. There was three. It was all Ezio story. It was a uh, part two, uh, Brotherhood, and I forget what the other one was called. Uh, but it was all Ezio story. Uh, but I played all those four games, and then I got all my money back from GameStop too. Oh, that guy did me a solid because it only took me like four or five days, like four or five days to beat him all. I would come home from work and just play it for four or five hours every day. Wake up in the morning before work and play it for three hours and shit. <laughs> Super early. Um, so I got really into it. And yes, I was angry when they killed Desmond at the end of part three. I said, what are you going to do now? And then part four, which was Black Flag, got interesting. Because now it's that like continuation after Desmond. And somehow the story was still continuing. The modern day story was still continuing. And it was a sage. And now it made sense because you saw these motherfuckers in the past games. And the sages, and uh, that's when they went on, and they still kept explaining the sage. It was the same guy. They kept explaining the sages in the other ones, uh, the one when they went to France and shit. And it was the same guy. Well, he had a different colored eye, that fucking guy. But he, his soul got transferred from out of the fucking shit into a human at the end of Black Flag. And they left it there. It pissed me off. They never went back because when we got to Origins, which is the Egyptian one, they did a whole fucking other story and shit. Uh, they in the modern day story, it wasn't a sage. Um, uh, it was uh Cassandra, and then Layla, and then Layla dies. And going on to this because he says they ruined it with uh Valhalla. Valhalla was the Viking one. I didn't buy the Viking one, but it pissed me off because the Viking one just messed all the story up because I went on YouTube and I let me see what this game is about because I, I didn't want to play it. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't want to play Valhalla. I, I saw all the previews. I saw all the explanations and it was just like this game does not sound cool. The Cassandra one was perfect because it was RPG and this one's not RPG and it pissed me off. It was it was different. Um, So I didn't even bother, but I saw the story on YouTube and it completely fucked it up because now it's like, oh, Loki, Loki and 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 and, and Thor and Odin because you were actually Odin's spirit or his. Oh, my God. They just fucked everything up. And Loki is now loose and I'm playing Mirage right now. The one in Baghdad. And that's supposed to be Loki from back then. And I know I'm saying Loki and Odin and it sounds crazy, but you understand is that those names, it's not like they were actually Norse gods. They were just people and those were the people's names that those people are from the first civilization before the great catastrophe before but that's why they we don't know our true history those fucking people those were their names and they were able to put their consciousness in a machine and technology and be able to be reborn inside of a human beings but they have to remember who they were and shit oh it's crazy uh but hey, it completely deviated from when the original story was going what happened to the sages and shit and desmond and his family so, yeah, right now it's lost. And we're going to get Black Samurais now in Japan, and everyone's pissed. Everyone's pissed. 
Uh, so yeah, it's time for a reboot. I agree. I would have thought that by now the franchise would have moved on to modern day where now you're an assassin fighting the Templars or now Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. In modern days with guns and snipers and cars, GTA style, still wearing a hoodie. And this time it's a hoodie. The guy wears a hoodie. Maybe wears a backpack like a kid or something like one of those street kids. It'd be badass, but no, they're fucking still fucking around in the past. Uh, so I don't know. Whatever. I'm with you, man. I'm uh, I'm with you. I'm playing right now Assassin's Creed Mirage. It feels that one actually feels more like the very first game. They they just make you sneak around and do everything stealth. And frankly, that's how I like to play. I don't like combat. I don't like combat at all. Uh I, with Cassandra, I I mean even with Cassandra, I didn't like it. With Cassandra, what I would do is I was on Archer from far away. I was just sharpshooting people. Uh but besides that, my favorite stuff is to sneak around and then go behind people and, whooshing, and then grab the body and put, him, put, put, put the body in a bush and then keep walking around finding the next motherfucker. I would clear an entire castle without ever getting spotted <laughs> and killing every single buddy. <laughs> That's the way I play, man. I like it like that. Cheers! Canceled for life. Oh! Super Saiyan. Uh, a Super, a super Saiyan. Hoku. He says, um, the ditty keeps getting worse. Did you don't, did you don't play? He treated her like I treat my kids for not listening. <laughs> you punt kick your kids. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> Anyways, he says, when I tell you to do something, you do it. You little prick. Now pick up the mess I threw at you. You caused this on yourself. Daddy don't play with that shit, Mo. Flowers, cheers. Hashtag. <laughs> Oh, you gotta be hard, these motherfuckers, man. Ah, uh, my neighbors call the cops on their son all the time. That motherfucker's gotta be like ten or eleven, but he looks fifteen. <laughs> That's the biggest fucking kid in the world. <laughs> that month, and I remember maybe if maybe like last year in the fall, that motherfucker was small and skinny. That motherfucker's tall and looks like a fucking linebacker now. <laughs> and he's still a kid. He, <laughs> he, he can't be older than 10, I know, because he's still in middle. He's still in the... I don't think he's in... He's in elementary, I think. He's not in the middle school yet. I don't think. I don't think that's a middle school. I don't know. Anyways. It doesn't matter. The point is... Maybe it is a middle school. Maybe he's 10 or 11. I don't know. It's a big kid. But they call the cops all the time. Last time, the ambulance, the fucking, uh, the, uh, the fire department and the cops came. And the kid was, like, behind the car like that. And they were all surrounding him, like, trying to talk him down and shit. <laughs> ah, it was hilarious, bro. It was hilarious. I was all like, all this would be fixed with a good old whooping. Good old-fashioned whooping. Uh, but everybody's afraid to whoop their kids nowadays. Not Joku. Joku knows. We're old school motherfuckers. You get that chancla and you fuck those motherfuckers up. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers, Joku. You know what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have kids, you know, for that main reason. Because uh, I don't want to beat them and then go to jail for beating, beating children. Uh, because that's probably what would happen. <laughs> so I avoid those kinds of situations and I always pull out and come in the face. Cheers! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Super Saiyan Joku also on the Steve, Steve Buscemi got attacked. It must be the blacks getting back for the Asian hating blacks, even though they love their food and Asian love hip hop culture. Oh, well. Next time. Give New York Debo your chain. Cheers, Muff Flowers. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about this tonight because he got caught. So I don't want I wanna talk get too much into it, Joku. And shit. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we'll keep we'll keep going on. Uh, on the Black Samurais are here. Joku says, "My best friend, my best friend, my best friend, <laughs> my best friend lived in Japan." 
And they're really racist, he says. But it was okay, because he's right. I mean, why? Because he's right. I mean, white. Cheers, small flowers. Um, I'll just tell you like this. Japan is an island. And it's been isolated for so long. And their culture is really strict. And so different than everyone else's. That when you live in an environment where 99.9% percent of the population looks like this you're bound to fucking be discriminatory against every other person that doesn't look like that even if you're not taught racism you'll be like well you're gonna be like well well that man's skin is really brown <laughs> you know what i'm saying well, that's got those guys eyes are really round and big they're bulging out of their sockets you know i mean it's just it's the way it is you, you can't help but identify un identify someone who looks different than you you know would you look at me people are racist to me all the time can't even step out the door somebody looking at me faggot fuck you this is normal you're the faggot you don't look like this, pussy. That's what I say. Cheers! Gomer Kyle, uh, the depression sits in for the Son of Man video. I feel you, bud. I just got to where I don't care anymore. Lots of old content out there. I'm actually rewatching the old Batman animated series. That's so badass. Not only is it as good as I remember, it also brings tons of my childhood memories back. I had all those toys, such great nostalgia. Cheers! Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do at the end. Gober, you're putting me on a spot here. I look like an idiot. <laughs> Cheers, motherfuckers. Uh, that show... That show was probably not for kids. It's such a badass show. Mm. It's, uh, it's probably one of the best next to Spider-Man 94. Uh, straight up. I think that Batman the Animated Series was perfect. I like the I like the way everything looked really retro, like it was in the 30s or 40s, but yet it was still modern time. I kind of like that 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 feel to it because it did have that feel to it, you know. The buildings and shit always looked really tall too. It was crazy, you know. It was a good show, and and everything the the soundtrack in every episode the soundtrack was amazing. Yeah, the noir feeling. Yeah, it was really good. And it was such a smart show. Like That's why I say, I mean, in reality, it's for kids. The kids can watch it and get entertained and shit. Uh, but a lot of them, I mean, a little kid might not understand what some of these words or what, what's going on and shit. They just know Batman's about to fight a bad guy. They, they really know what the fuck's happening. Uh, but, you know, you watch the show nowadays and you're all like, yeah, this is a fucking good-ass show. Yeah, yeah. Cheers! Biden's lonely day. Oh, but but he corrected and says this was supposed to be the toast video. I guess YouTube messed up. Imagine that. So it was supposed to be on the can we get some toast video. He says, uh, Gomer Kyle. When I hear toast, I think of the comedy song. Yeah, toast by Haywood Banks, which is better than anything Disney's ever made lately. Cheers. Hashtag. Uh, I don't know Haywood Banks, and I never heard of this Yeah Toast. And shit. Uh, I gotta look it up on YouTube one of these days. Cheers, Gomer. I'm gonna smoke to you. This motherfucker keeps going out, man. I miss those, those, uh, brown sugar. Those brown sugar rolling papers. Super Saiyan Joku. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? It was like blunt. It was like the blunt wraps, but it was like zigzag size. And it was it was called brown sugars. It was it was a, a chick with an afro, 
and 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 the little thong, and you would see your big ass. Those were badass to row, dude. Hmm. I miss those. I gotta look it up on eBay to see if I can find those, because I know they don't make them anymore. But I bet you somebody has like a stash somewhere I could buy. Uh, Gomer also says on the Biden's loading day, lonely day. Do I have to say anything besides Trump 2024? Ah, oh, yeah. cheers. Oh, Trump's Bronx rally brought them out too. Joe couldn't even get crabs. Fuck Joe Biden. Ah, cheers, Gomer. <laughs> Look, I just want the Democrats out of office. I mean, at this point, it's never been more blatantly obvious that this party just wants everyone to be poor. I don't, I mean, so what? Because their so basis is like, oh, you're poor. We can help you and take care of you. Just sign up here on this website. Fuck you. We give you all my information and shit. Here's a government owned card. And we'll take care of you. Make sure you carry it around everywhere because that chip has a GPS in it. It's shit. I'm telling you, bro. So, yeah. Uh, at this point, I just, I just want the rich bastards back in office. The, the Republicans. Because at least they care about money. And they know that if everyone makes money... Meaning us, the working class, the slaves. If the slaves are making money, then the slaves are spending money on the shit they're selling us. But if we don't have money, then they're not making money either. And they understand that. Idiots. That's how, that's how capitalism works, you dumbass. Democrats. Democrats try to turn this into a fucking communism. That's the problem. You know? The problem is, is there's got to be rich people and they have to get tax breaks. So in order to give you a raise, all right, and then you need to have money in order to buy the shit they're selling you. But if you don't have money, you cannot afford it. They're also losing money and they're going to be just as poor as you are, which is why uh, Kate Blanchett just said she's middle class. Even though she, she has like $95 million, she's middle class. She's poor now. Thanks to Joe Biden. He's making celebrities poor. A dumbass. Anyways. Vote for anyone except Joe Biden. Cheers! <laughs> and the Democrats. Don't vote for them. <sighs> Super Saiyan Joku says, on the, on the Diddy, beat up Cassie or whatever. If she was really smart, she should have used his money to train jiu-jitsu and beat Diddy the fuck. The trainer like Tom Brady's ex-wife did. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Cheers, he says. Cheers, Joku, you motherfucker. Um... Hey, man, I mean, we'll talk more about the Diddy tonight. I don't get too much into these subjects yet, motherfuckers. I'll be reading your comments right now. Uh, uh, Gomer Kyle and the Steve Buscemi got fucking beat up. If this would have been the other color switch, we, we know what would happen. They would have gotten the chair. New York may bring back the unalived un penalty again just to get rid of Whitey. LOL. Cheers. Cheers, Gober! That's another subject for tonight. Gober! Always bringing up shit early, you motherfuckers! <laughs> we'll talk about it later, Gober. <laughs> I got my response for that. <laughs> oh, let me make sure this is the last one. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yes, it is. It's none other. Then my butt's been wiped. Oh yeah! <laughs> Not me. I mean, well, I mean, my butt's been wiped. It's been wiped and licked clean, motherfuckers. But this guy's uh, avatar name is my butt's been wiped. Uh, he says on the Biden's lonely day. Says, 
I know you're Trump people over here, but Joe is going to win again. Trump equals clown. Biden 2026. I may get shit, but I could take it. Oh, I like this guy. Yes! Hey, you're entitled to your opinion, and if you want to, you want to vote for a senile old man in diapers who's shitting and destroying our economy because he's taking orders from a bunch of people that are telling him what to do because he's not conscious of his actions. He really is not conscious of his own actions. All right. And whenever they do this debate thing, I can't wait. Oh, whenever they do this debate thing, they're going to pump them full of B12 injections, steroids, everything, fucking even methamphetamines right before he goes out there just so he can be a little alert and fucking be able to continue. And Trump is going to go crazy. I can't wait. It's going to, oh my God, I can't wait. <laughs> Is it going to be a crazy debate? Oh, no, I can't wait. I can't wait. We'll, we'll wait to see what happens. <laughs> we'll have all the highlights. It's a clown show all around. All right. <laughs> the fact that the <laughs> that these are the two best candidates that they're proposing for the for what used to be the greatest nation in the world. God damn it. We're not number one in nothing anymore. For fuck's sakes. We're not. We're not. Everyone knows it. All right. Everybody's beating us in everything. Mathematics, education, public television, stripping, everything. Motherfuckers are better at it than other countries in the United States. Ah, uh, we're no longer. But these are the two best motherfuckers they could find to say, hey, these are the best choices to run the country. There is no hope for none of us. Cheers. <laughs> Oh my God. And I thought it was bad when it was John Kerry versus George Bush. This is worse. <laughs> it, this is so much fucking worse. Ah, oh, God damn it. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. Cheers, my butt's been wiped. Don't worry, we're not giving you too much shit. You can vote for Biden if you want. We I always say, anybody who votes this selection is a dumbass. And anybody who's ever voted, period, is a dumbass. <laughs> I don't vote, all right? That way, when shit hits the fan, I can say it wasn't my fault because I didn't vote for that motherfucker. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Thank you for commenting. My butt's been wiped. You're the shit. We love you. Uh, but we're done with the fucking comments. Finally, ah, uh, for fucking ever, you motherfuckers, done with that ass. And uh, remember, we're on X, Cinema Six Six Five, and we are at the Under the Ground Broadcast on IG. And whatever you send me on your social medias, I'll post here and shit. As long as you put it within time. Gomer Kyle actually sent me something earlier, with enough time that I was able to do this y'all but he wanted to show off some of his pops that he didn't get to show us check it out joku he wanted to show off and flex for you say fuck you super saiyan joku you think you're so badass with your room full of pops and all your your fucking dragon ball z legendary signed by akira toriyama fuck you he says i got kramer newman jerry seinfeld george costanza and elaine motherfucker Oh, yeah, those are badass, bro. And he's got the Kramer when Kramer was when he had a job, I think, because he has a little suit. He has the Newman. I don't know what Newman is that because that's not the regular postman Newman, is it? Uh, He has the Jerry with the puffy shirt <laughs> where that chick, he wore that chick. Uh, he's got regular George. I think that's just a regular George Costanza. And then he's got Elaine with a sombrero. She bought at that fucking Playa Maya or whatever. And she was getting mad because she went and bought a bunch of shit at the other store. And then the other store is all owned by the same lady. <laughs> fucking dumbass. Oh, that's fucking funny. Um, but then he also showed off the Golden Girls. He's got them all. Blanche Rose and Sophia and shit. And the other lady. I would fuck them all for sure. Oh, yeah. There's a porn out there. A parody with the Golden Girls. 
<laughs> Check it out, fellas. Oh, also, I just want to say congratulations to Gomer Kyle because he did send me that uh, he had been illegal for like 11 years. He didn't have a driver's license. This motherfucker driving around illegally and shit. But he finally passed. He went and got his driver's license. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Gober! <laughs> I didn't know if you want me to post your... I, did, I, did, I mean, I mean, I don't know. That's that's a little too personal. So I didn't post your driver's license. <laughs> I know he blurred it out for me. I didn't want you to see the numbers. And, but I still don't want to post it, Gober. Because come on, bro. That's your driver's license. <laughs> so no, I don't want to post it. But congratulations, Gober. You're fucking legal. In this fucking country. God bless you. And God bless America. Cheers. Thank you all for commenting. You make the motherfucking show. And ass. We're done with the comments. One last time. What's left in this beer. Cheers. All right, let me get another beer here. It's all wet. Let me dry it before I pop it open for you. Cheers. All right. Let's get this show on the road and keep going with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, we're we'll getting a little political on the motherfucking chats. We're going to get right into it. None other than Muva herself, or whatever she likes to call herself, Amber Rose. Uh, what does it say? Hash or some ass on her fucking forehead? I don't know. I seen this chick naked with her, with her bent over, spreading her pussy lips on the internet. Uh, the pictures are up there. I'm like, I can't post them here. The pictures are up there. You want to see it? I'm just saying. She sent those pictures to Kanye, and then Kanye put them on the internet. It's badass. <laughs> Anyways, Amber Rose is getting hate on the internet. My friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not for being a slut. No, no, no. Let it be known right here, live on the Underground Broadcast. We support Amber Rose and her slut movements. All these young women, not little girls, these are of age women who want to walk around naked, show their titties or pussy in their ass like Bianca's and sorry. I fully support that kind of behavior. We support women like this. We love it. Go have your annual slut walk. Down New York City. Have you all ever seen it? They walk around naked. All these chicks. And she's in the front walking with them. Spreading their lips. Showing it like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, she's not being hated on the internet for being a slut. God bless her. No. She is getting hatred on the internet. For supporting Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause she put a picture of her with uh, I, I, uh, what is this chick's name? Uh, I don't even remember. Trump's current wife, Ivanka. No, it's not Ivanka. I don't remember this chick's name. Whatever her name is, the first lady, sexy. Whatever her name is, been naked too. You can see her on the internet. It's hot as fuck. Anyways, she took a picture with them. It's a banquet and shit. Trump there doing the the. He's doing the Orange Cassidy because he didn't want to. He didn't want to do the thumbs up like that, so he just kind of did the Orange Cassidy down here, you know, down here. Uh, thumbs up. Uh, but anyways, people are talking shit about her, and she put on IG. Yeah, yeah. Laughing my ass off. Y'all think Biden cares about black people? You're sad. Do your research. I did. I always put women first. Just like our president who loves women. Oh, yeah, grabs about a pussy. Come here, you slut. That's what we're all about. Y'all want biological men in women's sports? That's what Biden wants. 
He wants a seven foot tall black man with a wig beating all the women in basketball. That's what he wants. But Trump supports the most reasonable compromise on abortion. Yeah, Trump says, hey, if you didn't mean to tell the guy come inside me, you can go ahead and get it aborted. All right, I think. I don't know. I'm not too sure. I don't follow up with that shit because, like I said, I pull out and come to faces. And I don't have that problem. But some shit about abortion. And she continues. She said, stop being brainwashed because we're people of color. Make your own decisions. You dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're getting all these haters coming around here hating on Amber Rose for liking Trump. Uh... Hey, there's gonna be haters because there's a lot of biting motherfuckers sympathizers and a lot of these left wingers and ass and these are the same motherfuckers that always want to fucking come around here and, and trash on everybody these fascist communist socialist sons of bitches All right, you don't know how to accept someone's different than you get the fuck out of my face you dumbass All right So we're all about acceptance, All right? You don't know how to accept that, ah, oh, well, she likes orange-haired men. Well, leave her alone. She likes to be grabbed by the pussy. There's nothing wrong with that. Some women love it. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Have you ever grabbed a woman by the pussy? Try it. They might like it. And if they do, cheers to you. Oh, cheers! <laughs> Uh, but since we are talking about Trump, Trump is actually suing the shit out of The Apprentice movie with Sebastian Stan, fucking Bucky from the MCU, who's playing him. Because they premiered this at some festival, some fucking, uh, one of these Hindi festivals where they show all these movies and they got to show in theaters later next year. The motherfuckers already got the size, see it. And then you go see the Rotten Tomato score, and you're all like, how the fuck is there a Rotten Tomato score and the movie don't come out till next year? Anyways, they're loving this movie. Standing, eight minutes, standing novations. Everybody stood up, clapping and shit. There's a lady who passed out, uh, uh, tears. And shit, we're running down our faces. This is a movie shows Trump. Uh, doing meth, amphetamines to get skinny. You also see him fucking uh, getting liposuction, eating hamburgers, Burger King, and shit. You're gonna see him grabbing women by the pussies. It's gonna be badass. Uh, and apparently, allegedly raping his, drugging and raping his first wife, Ivana Trump, and shit. That lady who still take, who still lives off of his money to this very day uh yeah i don't know how the hell you rape someone you're married with married to uh you know maybe she's asleep and you put it in is that rape i don't know i mean when you're married it kind of belongs to you same thing with your dick i'm like bitch if you want to suck my dick when i'm asleep that's fine with me you know it be the same way the other way around i'm just saying <laughs> uh but anyways, Trump is pissed that this movie was shown and he doesn't like the things that were shown about him. And he is sending his lawyers after this production company and after Bucky and he says, fuck you, Winter Soldier. This movie will never be released. I'm putting a stop to this. Yeah, my Trump ain't that good, all right? I don't have AI right now on the spot, pussies. Uh, but yeah, this is happening. This movie, I can't wait till it comes out. It's gonna be miraculous and amazing. It's gonna be amazing on the top, the top of the charts. They're saying Sebastian Stan does amazing. He does amazing, really amazing. <laughs> I, 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 sorry, my Trump is really bad. <laughs> oh my God, I want to see this movie. I really do. You know, I want to know who else is in it besides besides fucking Sebastian Stan and shit. I want to hear his impression, his voice. That's what I want to see. If he doesn't do the voice right, I don't know, man. That's when he's going to fuck up. You got to get the voice. They could just get AI to do the dub the voice, AI, the whole movie. 
It could be done. It could be done. AI's got him pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Anyways, Trump's not having it and he's pissed. Let it be known right now you don't disrespect the future leader, leader of the free world a year before he's even president. Fuck you. Um, anyways, we're gonna move on from this Trump shit. We'll see how this plays out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but another update we do have for you tonight on the Steve Buscemi. We had put out this update last week. We put this out. America's Most Wanted. We're looking for this man. We're looking for this homeless man who beat up Steve Buscemi. And thanks to us here, here at the fucking dudes podcast. We got him, folks. That's what we're all about here. We're a network. We put this picture out, the surveillance from our footage from motherfuckers over there. They found it. We put this out. Everybody tell your friends, share this video. It went viral. And somebody called the authorities and we got them. We got the son of a bitch. And none other than Clifton Williams. Homeless, crack addict, mentally disabled, or bipolar. One or the other. I don't know. When they found him, he was trying to buy his fentanyl off, off of an undercover cop. They caught him. Clifton Williams has been arrested. And apparently, he that was not the only man. Because right before he beat up Steve Buscemi, around the corner, he had beat up another fucking Asian man. Because I'm telling you, he was a mistake of identity. He thought Steve Buscemi was Asian. All right. But they caught the son of a bitch. But don't worry. Luckily... Because of the New York woke liberal laws that are in place. Because he is homeless, disabled, mentally unstable, and uh, and black. He was released right away. Here you go, sir. Go back into society and do it again. We're not even going to tell you it was wrong. <laughs> Cheers to New York and their laws. Yeah, it's a perfect environment for people like us to thrive, us Browns. We can go to New York and just do whatever the fuck we want and no repercussions whatsoever. Oh, yeah. Just going to a Macy's. Hey, give me those pumps and those heels, bitch. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And put them on our feet and walk out like a fucking queen. Ain't nobody going to do nothing here. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? Maybe Steve Buscemi deserved it. You know, maybe this guy's all like, hey, sir, can you spare a dollar? Hey, wait a minute, sir. Didn't you come out in uh, Reservoir Dogs? You weren't your Mr. Orange or some ass? Don't you have a, like, you're a billionaire. You would have been in every fucking uh, Adam Sandler movie. Can you maybe have two dollars? And Steve Buscemi's all like, F you, N-word. Never know. You never know. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker just got out of Planet Fitness or whatever, working out all day. He looks kind of skinny here. He looked really buff as fuck in the other picture we were showing her uh, from last week. He looks buff as fuck. And over here, I mean, I don't know. I feel like this is some kind of conspiracy right here. He looks like he just got out of the gym. He's all buff. He looks normal. And then over here, he looks homeless. His, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I think that they're, they're fucking with us, fellas. I think this was an inside job or something. This might be a CIA agent. This might not even be real right here. Because I'm telling you. And why is his beard all clean if he's homeless? Shouldn't he be big like it was over here? See, none of this is adding up. I don't even think that's the same man. You see? This one's not bald and this one's clearly bald. Something's going on, fellas. This doesn't add up. I think Steve Buscemi's trying to cover up for something racist that happened that we're not knowing about. We don't know all the facts in this channel. Let's just put it like that. This channel doesn't have all the facts. But I don't think the news has all the facts either. It's getting crazy and weird. And why is that black lady look so sad and depressed? And look at this fucking Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban motherfucker with his lazy eye. Super Saiyan Joku, do you believe that guy is some kind of fucking drug informant agency? Fuck you. 
This is all fake right here. This might be like fake ass shit. Those motherfuckers don't look professional enough to have those jobs. It's all gonna say. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something screwy going on here. I don't buy it. Dominicans coming over here to America and being chiefs of police, arresting homeless men for beating up celebrities. Something fishy going on here. And we don't like it. Anyways, this is a developing story, or my, this might be the end of it. I don't know. We'll talk about it next week if I find another article. We're done. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> there was some controversy that went on this week. It's a controversy. The motherfuckers on the internet always pissed off. This is America. Everyone's mad with their lives. With their wives, with their children, with the way the, the 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 bills and their shitty paychecks, and the motherfuckers who don't use the blinker to turn and shit. Everyone's mad in America. God damn you, Joe Biden! Look how far we come since you've been president, you son of a bitch. But everyone's mad. But they were especially mad this week at the brand new Sports Illustrated swimsuit model of the year. Hunter McCready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at those curves, fellas. You can ride that wave all night. That wave could take it. Yeah, could take it and never complain. Talk about like, it hurts. No, not that way. I know. This one will take it. We'll never complain. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> She's built for it. God bless her. Cheers! <laughs> but yes, people are upset that she is the new Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. And they're coming out and trying to remind us and saying, hey, remember in the 80s when the bitches didn't have any tits? And their pussies, uh, you could see like their 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 the what was it was it called the thigh gap or the pussy gap? It's shit. Yeah, those were the eighties. And then they are saying, and then remember in the nineties when they really didn't have asses unless they squatted, but they had fucking boobs and shit. That was hot, big big boobs. And people were complaining, saying, "How did we go from this to this?" I'll tell you how. McDonald's, Burger King. Pizza Hut, all the best fuss fast foods got to offer, motherfucker. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so the man's never discriminated. And for you fucking haters, sons of bitches, let me just let you know. This woman is beautiful and hot as fuck. And I can tell you right now that probably 90% of men, 90% of men, right now in this day and age would hit this right away over any of these because we all know what this feels like oh yeah Cheers! <laughs> times have changed fellas times have changed and i'm not playing when i say times have changed because i live by a high school and i drive around and all the Skinny, what you would think, cheerleader type of little girls when because during lunch, you know, they're walking around or after school, they're walking by themselves. You know the the, the model type girls, but the big booty girls, oh yeah, the big hip girls. There's like two, three guys walking them home, or there's like two fellas walking them home. Like that's what I talk about. Those girls are getting all the attention right now. You motherfuckers, y'all fucked up. This is back in the day and this is today no one gives a shit about fucking skinny ass bony girls i don't want to feel your fucking rib cages when i'm hugging you and shit that's all i'm gonna say cheers to hunter mcgrady you keep flaunting that ass all right and don't worry what the haters say because the real people they're gonna buy this magazine you're gonna see you're gonna make millions of dollars baby oh yeah playboys next Cheers! <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Moving on from this ass. 
No, they're not junior highs. It's high school. I live by I live right by the high school, motherfuckers. Hey, calm down. I'm not checking them out. Is there ever the, I'm always yelling at them. Hey, because they're crossing the streets without looking at their phones, or they're looking at their phones and they're crossing the streets. They're using the crosswalks and shit, or they're throwing rocks at the ducks. I'm always yelling at motherfuckers. Trust me. All right, I'll put up with children. I don't like children. Forty and up on this channel, motherfucker. Let it be known. He who should not be named is the one with the preferences. All right, but he's out of here. That's why. That's why we went up to six hundred subscribers because that's that that fucking the pedo is out of here. <laughs> oh, Houston, Texas, very own Jose Tevinas here, everybody. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Me tienes envidia, puto. Cheers, Joko, your motherfucker. And remember, it's always live. Jose Trino, cheers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, nah, man, we also celebrate healthy lifestyles and shit. You know, I've always been a skinny guy my whole life. I looked at my, you know what it is? I looked at my, uh, my, 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 my pictures of like my dads and uncles and shit when they were young. And they were just skinny, tall, skinny guys. I mean, I'm short, but they're just skinny guys, skinny, skinny guys. So I've always been skinny. Uh, the difference is they got married. And when you marry a Mexican woman, she cooks for you three times a day. And <laughs> when I mean cooks for you, it's like a meal. I like snacker. A meal's a meal where you get a meal, some sides, and shit and a half. So breakfast for my dad was always like, huevos rancheros with beans and bacon and tortillas. And, you know, it's a meal for breakfast. The same thing for lunch and the same thing for dinner. So, you know, my, my dad eventually looked like he was nine months pregnant for the rest of his life. Uh, <laughs> but me, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm over here just free, free balling. You know, I'm a shark for life. Swimming in the ocean, biting anything I can. <laughs> so, you know, no one feeds me. That's why I'm skinny. Cheers. Thank you, Trevino, for being here, you motherfucker. I love you. All right, all right. Let's move on. So, motherfucker. Uh, because the Tyson, Mike Tyson versus Logan Paul is... Just around the corner next month. Or is it in July? I don't even remember. It's this summer. And we're probably going to watch it on the Illegal Broadcast channel. Just so to let you all know. You know what it is. We'll watch it here. Um, we're watching again. I'm, I'm, I'm always reminding you. We're watching <clears throat> Double or Nothing this Sunday at 6 p.m. Just look for our, check our channel for the link. It's shit. I'll send it to you guys on Twitter for those of you who are there. And Instagram. But anyways, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson coming up pretty soon. Sometime in uh, June or July. Right here, 15 minutes away from where I live. I try to get a job as an usher. They're being racist because I'm brown and wear makeup and got long hair. Fuck you. Want to give me a job? Well, fuck you. That's what I told those sons of bitches. Uh, anyways. We had... Their confrontation, you know, that little where they do this and they pose and then they have a little the fucking uh, uh, interviews and shit. Well, fucking here we go. I'll give you a, the snippets, some of the best highlights of some of the shit that was said, some of the rhetoric. There was a little boy that pretty much embarrassed Logan Paul, Jake Paul or whatever. Uh, but uh, give you a little show you what's what, what, what happened. Here we go. I want to kiss Mike's big juicy lips. You want to kiss me? <laughs> he said he Indeed. 
Huh? He said he wanted to kiss you. That's so ironic that he said that because I saw a picture of him dancing at 16 doing a little dance on yeah. YouTube, and for some reason I had an erection. <laughs> Keep that same energy when I knock this old man the fuck out. He's fat. He should be lean and mean. He's fat and funky. I saw him with his shirt off the other day. He's fat. I thought... Buster Douglas was fat, am I right? I know, but you're no Buster Douglas. <laughs> I'm better. I'm you're, better. No, and I'm gonna, not, I'm gonna end you quicker than he did. And, and you'll remember that forever. You okay. started me off. I appreciate that, Mike. I love you. I love you. Like a father loves his son, but I must discipline you. <laughs> You're going down, old man. Okay, I love you too. Who did he knock out? Little, little children. He didn't knock out, never knocked out a real man. Come on. He didn't knock out, he didn't knock out um, Tommy Fury. Who would train me better, Jake or, Jake or you, Mike? Who, me, definitely me. Uh, older fighters have more heart and balls and weren't afraid, but I think the newer fighters have more skill and technique and are sharper. So that's why I'd be a better coach. Yeah, it's high yeah, shit. So, so, so you think he has bigger balls? Who, who do you think's got a higher body count? What's your body count, Jake? Wow. What's your no. body count? Uh, I mean, I I, body count? No. Yeah. Where is this kid's mother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake, you think yours is higher? Ah, <laughs> uh, that kid burned him bad, man. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, let me just say so this. Difficult oh, to sorry about that. Oh, I'm fucking up. Left and right here, you fellas. Uh, <laughs> tonight I'm fucking drunk. Um, Paul was disrespectful to him the fact that Mike I don't know man I know this is all for show and shit but there was like some instances in Mike's face that even Mike Tyson was all like he's fucking saying that I really hope Tyson knocks him out man I really hope but I'm also scared for Tyson because he's he's old man this is like this is an old guy. I think he's in his 50s or 60s. I don't know. So one of y'all will correct me down there. He's old, you know. He's not as quick and shit. He doesn't have the I don't know. I hope I hope they pump him they they pump him full of like adrenaline or testosterone to get him angry and shit. To beat the shit out of Jake Paul because I don't think Jake Paul is going to take it easy at all on Tyson. Jake Paul is going to go straight for it. Just going boom 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 boom. boom. 56 years old. You know, that's a grown ass man fighting a young kid. He's a kid, basically, compared to him. Um, and I don't think Jake Paul is going to fucking take it easy because he's a he's a fucking piece of shit. That kid's a piece of shit. Uh, I want Mike to knock him out. I want Mike to win so bad. This is gonna go on both of the records, apparently. It's gonna be an official fight. Uh, and it'll go on both of their records and shit. Uh, I really don't want Mike to lose. We're going to watch it here. Live. On the broadcast. Illegal underground broadcast for y'all. So you know what is up. Motherfuckers. Um, anyways. Uh, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, but that was a lot of trash talking, man. I think he said a lot of disrespectful things to to Mike that I would never have even have said. I mean, I, it was kind of cringy in a way where it's like, oh, man, why are you saying this to this man? This man's a legend. A fucking legend. You're saying this. Whew. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out, fellas. We'll see how this turns out. You know, we'll be watching it here live, like I told you. But let's get into what I fucked up and showed you already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has completely taken over the Yeezy segment, by the way. The Yeezy's not even relevant anymore. All right? Because the only black man anyone wants to talk about nowadays is the nitty, 
Diddy. Gritty. Diddy. I said Diddy twice, but that's fine. Because he likes that. Take that. Take that. He likes to repeat things. Take that. Take that. Um, yeah, because apparently now that he's being sued by another model who claims he drugged and raped her and shit. <laughs> uh, it don't stop for this motherfucker. It don't stop. He's already being sued by a producer, a male producer. He's being sued by two other females. Three other females. And now another one has come forward and said, you know what? I remember. Now I remember. This guy drugged me, raped me and shit. You know? Pulled his dick out and he forced himself on me and he said, I'm rich and powerful and you take that, take that. Bitch. Can nobody hold you down? I'll hold you down. Bitch. That's what he was saying. Uh, <laughs> they're the Super Saiyan Joku beating up on his kids. <laughs> Come in here, you freak. Talking back to me, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, you have to be in during the comments to know what we're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, inside joke, inside joke. Um, Now, all this has come out. And, uh, you know, Cassie, the victim here from this video, has to come out and said, you know, it's important that women speak out when this happens to them. Because this is not right behavior and shit. Just because some motherfucking black dude grew up seeing their dad beat up their mom doesn't give them the right for them to beat up women. They should have learned from watching their dads that you should not do that. But when you're a child, you don't know, you don't under, quite understand things. Some maybe it seems normal, and you think, man, well, yeah, that's the way it is. But if daddy saw it all his life, and he said he thinks that's normal, and that's what he was doing, according to the 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 the, the defense. And anyway, we're not that we're not there in the court, so I'm just you know it's, we don't have all the facts here. We're just speculating. And uh, let it be now before we start being caught in the comments and shit. You pussies over there went to school and shit. Fuck you. Puff Daddy came out with a video, and he wanted to explain his act chance to everybody. Here we go, for all of you to know, right here, of the underground broadcast. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy. I had to go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. He's sorry, people. <laughs> uh, I muted my mic, but I was talking some mad shit. <laughs> uh, he's sorry, people. He's sorry for... The lowest times in his life. I don't know. It looks like that was Cassie's lowest time in life. Not his. <laughs> he was the one standing up, beating her on the ground. <laughs> I think it was the lowest part of her life right there. <laughs> He's sorry for his actions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes full responsibility. Well, of course, there was no one else in the video. You did it. We all saw it. <laughs> I take responsibility. Of course, it's right there in the video, you son of a bitch. You have to. <laughs> yo, yo, that ain't Biggie Smalls doing this. That ain't little C's. <laughs> Three foot tall little C's. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You take real full responsibility. Oh, my God. Fucking Diddy. I swear to God, man. Woo-hoo. Hey, you gotta, you gotta hit it. We gotta hit it one last time for these motherfuckers. And hey, do it, do it.
Can nobody hold me down? Can nobody take my pride? Oh no, I got to keep on moving. Oh yeah, I'll even spit a, I, I'll even spit a verse. Fuck it. Uh huh. Uh, we spent cheese in the West Indies, then come home to plenty cream Bentleys. You name it, I can claim it. Young, black, and famous with money coming out the anus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he wasn't lying too. There was fucking hundred dollar bills coming out of his asshole, and he was forcing motherfuckers to pull it out with their tongues and lips. <laughs> oh my god! I just let you down like that, motherfucker. <laughs> well, you know, like everybody's on this. We already know. Like I told you, Yeze, the like, Yeezy's old news. No one gives a fuck about Kanye and his naked wife and all the pornography. Everyone's done. This is what the news is focused on. <laughs> this is what everybody's talking about. But everybody wants everybody's opinion. Nobody's coming to send a man or the underground broadcast. Nobody's coming to ask us and asking us how do we feel about this. Such a bitches. But they're going up to other motherfuckers that honestly have nothing to do with it. <laughs> And we're not even there. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you a, a video here to show you what happened with CNN trying to get clicks and views and shit. Here's CNN trying to get clicks and views about this ass. <laughs> and they interviewed none other than Cameron. The rubber band man, Cameron. Remember him? He's the first fucking uh, faggot to wear pink. <laughs> now they all do it. But here we go. Here's Cameron being interviewed by CNN, and he keeps it G100. Thanks for being here. First, when you saw that video of Diddy, Cassie uh, in that hotel, did you recognize that Sean Combs? Um, but I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against, uh, I don't support, uh, all the charges that's alleged against them. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize as as everything him? I just said? Did you recognize that I, I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know like that. What do you mean? Do I be recognized? Did I recognize him? I've seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I've seen him and I thought, I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him. So, yeah, it was him. What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? Amy, for the, the apology ain't for me to decide for Cassie. What, what I what I think about it don't matter. He ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to need to ask Cassie if she accept the apology. I told you how I feel. I said what I said. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is there um, is there something known in the industry about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, I'm just going over what Mace said. Mace took me to Biggie. I don't really know Puff is like Mace no Puff. So I appreciate what Mace said. And of course, uh, that's my brother. So if he felt that way, then he felt that way. I can't really tell you how Puff moves or anything like that. Mace may know better than me because he was signed to Puff. I wasn't. But my show does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there. But for me to tell you mm. how Puff acting and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that all invited me to. Yo, who, yo, who booked me for this joint? All right. Oh, wow. And I'll be sitting Cameron, around watching Diddy and all that. Yeah, thanks, man, come on, man. That's thanks for crazy, joining man. us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Cameron! <laughs> The rubber band man, I kill a cam. 
<laughs> I y'all like when he was getting because it was a I I jumped it I cut it there because there was a lot of stuff they were getting on his nerves and when he didn't give a fuck he just he pulled out this little juice thing he opened it up and he even showed it the brand and then he he started sipping it and he goes hey God he goes I'm gonna get a little cheeks me I'm gonna get some ass after that was a little dick juice you drink that and then your dick gets hard for like the next four hours. <laughs> Hey, he said it on live TV. I'm gonna go get some ass after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking camera, dude. Oh man, and that was price when he says, hey, "Why are you asking me?" With apology, that's go ask her. Like <laughs> it didn't do nothing to me. <laughs> and then he finally had it done. Hey, who's my? Who booked me for this ass? They were supposed to talk about my YouTube show and my podcast and my new album. Why are you asking me all these ditty questions? Go ask Mace. He was the one signed to Bad Boy. I would never sign a Bad Boy. I knew Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls brought me into rap and got me into the producer. That got me signed into the label I was in. But I was not in Bad Boy. Why the fuck are you asking me all these questions about Puff Daddy, bitch? <laughs> oh my god so yeah this is like I, look if you want questions answered cnn come to the underground broadcast interview the son of man i will answer any diddy question you have i was a big bad boy diddy fan every step you take Everywhere you go, I'll be missing you. Faith Evans, everybody. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a big bad boy fan. You know what I'm saying? I thought I told you that we won't stop. I thought I told you that we won't stop. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I was all about it back in the day. Back in the day, before I knew this guy was a rapist and shit. A homosexual forcing himself on men and women. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this Diddy thing is not over, fellas. Not over at all. He hasn't gone to court yet and started answering for his crimes. <laughs> yeah, the same way he beat that girl right there and he pulling her. That's what they were going to do to him. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to have film of that, but <laughs> that's what's going to happen to him for sure in jail. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. Cheers to Diddy and Cameron and the whole situation and for giving us something to talk about on Friday nights and also for appreciating life and knowing that as shitty as this week has been and as shitty as we felt and as shitty as our lives has been and Joe Biden has fucked up our economy. At least we're not Puff Daddy. Cheers to that. One more time, I gotta double cheers. Cheers. All right, we're done with the pop culture breakdown. Let's get into it and move on to the weekly comic book nerd shit. Comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. Alright, that's the end of that one. Do we dare? After being sick all week, feeling like ass, and having nothing but bad luck? Yes, we're gonna get drunk. Cheers. And we're going to start off with the biggest ass of the comic book nerd world. And none other than Jorge R.R. R. Martin. Translated to English, George R.R. R. Martin, we all motherfuckers, has come out and said, Hey, after I finish writing The Winds of Winter, I am going to write brand new stories for the Hedge Knight because we're about to we're about to start filming. We just cast it all the actors for the Hedge Knight, a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, a spin-off show 
for the fucking Game of Thrones, HBO Max, and Warner Brothers. So after I finish the final book, I'm going to write some new stories. Because if you guys like the show, then they continue it with the stories I write. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is what no one is saying. You son of a bitch. You've been writing the last book for 13 years. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> the goddamn show caught up to you. The goddamn show had to finish because you couldn't finish the book that you've been writing for the past 13 years, you lazy son of a whore. You want to come around here talk about like, oh, like, uh, don't worry, like, uh, I'm going to write, I'm going to finish the final book next year. And then I'm going to write new stories for the new show they're writing. Oh, yeah, so then the show could be like, are you done writing the first story? No. Oh, shit, we're on season three, you dick. <laughs> this son of a bitch. This is, this is just ass. Just ass into the ears. Uh, the ears of an actual Game of Thrones fucking uh, world fanatic. Ass. We don't have, we lost faith in you, old man. I'm a little pissed that it, that it took this long to get season two of House of Dragon. But at the same time, I can't complain because unlike other studios who completely halted production, they halted production because of COVID. They couldn't, they couldn't film in the U.S. because of COVID, all the laws, and Joe Biden, all this ass. Couldn't film. They were able to fucking film outside of the U.S. And because of that, they were able to fucking finish on time. But it still took them an extra year to release it. Fuck you. You know what? If I was one of these producers or heads at Warner, I would be like, when you film, you better film season two, three, and four at the same goddamn time. We're paying everyone the same. I don't have to pay, give raises next year for everyone, and the actor gets better, so I gotta give him another raise for season three. Fuck you. Film three seasons at one go, and I pay them all one rate. You idiots. That's how we save money. We get shit out and people keep glued and give us more shit. You want to know why people want to subscribe? Because people are tired of waiting a year and a half for season two. When season one ends, I want a month, a month and a half, maybe three months at the most. A season. An actual season. Oh, it came out in summer. All right, fall. Give me fall as a break. And then winter hit me again with the next season. You dick. But they don't do that anymore. They take a year, a year and a half. People unsubscribe. Fuck you. None of this is just stupid. None of this is good news. And no one cares. Fuck you, George R. R. Martin. And you're stupid. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to finish the last book. The show ended four years ago. You idiot. They finished the last book. Fuck you. Are you going to write new stories? Fuck you. Idiot. We're moving on. This is just pissing me off. We got our first image of the rock. Big Cock Johnson transformed into Mike Kerr or Mark Kerr or whatever this fucking roided out fucking Kurt Angle looking motherfucker is. I had talked. When we did the podcast, not the broadcast, when we did the podcast, I had talked to he who should not be named, and we even said it here, it's in one of the fucking, you can go back if you want to fucking see old school ass that wasn't half as good as what it is now. Anyways, go back and watch it. But when I had talked and told this piece of shit that if The Rock was going to play him, because he looks more like Kurt Angle, if The Rock was going to play him, they were going to have to give The Rock prosthetics to make him less egg-shaped and make his head squared and then put a lot of hair on him because The Rock is bald from all those roids that he did all those years. And he, he still does to this day. 
And I think that's exactly what they did. Not only that, they put prosthetics on his nose. Well, no, not so much on his nose. I think that's still The Rock's nose. It's us. Uh, damn, it doesn't look like The Rock. It, for sure, his, his eye, where, where his eyes is, there's stuff on there in his cheeks. Wow. I hope he acts the shit out of this and becomes known or at the very least maybe he won't win but at the very least get nominated for some kind of award because it's like saying like oh shit it was it for the first time ever we didn't see Dwayne DeRock Johnson being himself on screen who knows all I gotta say is for sure the prosthetics and makeup department need to win an award for this it doesn't look like him. I, I still say uh, Kurt Angle resembles this guy more. Uh, but The Rock physically is physically per could portray this fucking meat roided out monster. Yes. Is he going to act like him? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, You'd wait a year for The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right, Gomer. They take a long fucking time. Anyways, I'm curious. I don't want to say I'm excited. I I love, like the makeup department did amazing on this. I'm curious. I'm not, I'm not excited. I want to wait till I see the trailer before I say I'm excited about this. Um, like I said, Zac Efron didn't look like fucking um Kevin Von Eric at all, and he was way too short. Way too short. But nobody was going to look like Yvonne Eriks. Nobody. Kurt Angle looks like this guy. Kurt Angle could have been him, but I don't think Kurt Angle could play him nowadays. Because Kurt Angle is not in that good shape, and The Rock does steroids for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Every time he takes a shit, he gets an injection. <laughs> HGB or whatever it's called. Uh, cheers to the rock and a24 because you know they put out good movies uh by the way uh uh civil war just came out of digital so make sure you get on your windscribe vpn and download that shit everybody pirate it cheers cheers to a24 for putting out quality films <clears throat> anyways one of these comic cons one of these asses that nerds pay for Got all excited. And they said, oh, we got the first look ever of Street Fighter, the live action reboot from Legendary. And it was just a fucking banner with like, it looked like, it looked like the way the video game looks, the logo, it looked exactly like the old school, like nothing different. So I don't know why nerds are all like, oh, this is awesome. Everybody, let me make a whole 10 minute video explaining this ass. Fuck you. So we're not even going to spend um, fucking 30 seconds on this. We're moving on. Fuck you. Legendary. <laughs> what happened this week, though, is that they did show the very first official non-teaser trailer. For Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. With Jenny Ortega. Too bad Indie Phantom isn't here. Uh, like I said, hopefully he'll be here once we get on the main channel. And, uh, and a bunch of... Willem Dafoe is in this. Danny DeVito. A bunch of motherfuckers. Catherine O'Hara. Again, uh, Winona Ryder. Looking really wrinkly. I mean... Is she really that wrinkly? I don't remember. I mean, I, I used to. I mean, I still think Winona Ryder's hot as fuck. Um, I've always thought she was fucking Jen. That was my girl right there. But I would probably be. I would have that kind of relationship with her, like 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 Johnny Depp, where I would beat the shit out of her in a hotel room. But back then there wasn't any cameras like the way there was when Diddy did it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the same thing that happened to Diddy happened to Winona Ryder with Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Depp. We love you on this channel. But Jenna Ortega's here. 
Anyways, Beetlejuice comes back and still wants to fucking marry. Well, he wants to marry Lydia. But from what I understand from the trailer is that he's already married in the afterlife. And that hot chick that looks like that one. It looks like uh, Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas, you know, with the, the stitches on her face. That chick is way hotter than, <laughs> than Lydia. But that's who Beetlejuice is going to be married to in the afterlife. And he's trying to leave his wife to go come back to Lydia. <laughs> that's, I guess, what the movie's going to be. And Willem Dafoe is some cop in the afterlife. Who gets hired to like bounty hunter to go catch Beetlejuice? Because he's not supposed to be out and uh, running around and shit, doing ass. Uh, Monica Buscelli, she's nude in everything. Holy shit, Gomer Kyle! Now I'm gonna have to search on Google or Bing, cause Bing is better for porn. Monica Buscelli nude. Holy fuck! Make sure you turn your your safe search off, guys. Cheers! <laughs> There's a lot of practical effects on this. Hardly any CGI. And even the little bit of CGI, they try, they try to downgrade the CGI when the sandworm comes out. They try to downgrade the CGI to make it look like stop motion. Uh, but you know that's not stop motion. It's CGI. But they downgraded it to make it look like CGI. Um, damn. I'm actually looking forward to this. I was scared that it was going to be too woke. There was going to be all these fat people with fucking glasses and orange haircuts and purple hair and shit and lesbian haircuts. Because that's what I saw in the pictures that I showed you all from behind the scenes. But I guess that's the crew they hire nowadays. You gotta hire diversity. Fuck it. I'll be honest with you. If we ever make it, I'm gonna hire a bunch of lesbians, gays, and motherfucking blacks up in his bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one white guy, Mormon white guy, we all yell at. Hey, where's our coffee? But I'm the producer. Why? You also get us coffee, bitch. <laughs> the smartest guy here. We all yell at him. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Burton's a. Tim Burton's good to what he likes, man, and it looks like they let him do what he wanted to do. Um, I'm curious, though, because Jenna Ortega is seeming like a kind of side character, which at the same time, I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping and glad that she might just be a side character because the movie should be Beetlejuice and Lydia. Let's be honest. Fuck everything else. Um, that's what the cartoon was. Did you ever watch the Nickelodeon? I think it was a Nickelodeon. The Beetlejuice cartoon with Lydia. I'm the ghost with the mouse. It was a badass, dude. I loved it. Lydia would call him all the time for everything. <laughs> it was like his her magic genie. <laughs> it was so crazy. A cartoon show like that was crazy. Um, but I, I, I don't think Jenna Ortega... Is going to be like a huge... It was on ABC. Gomer says it was on ABC. Yeah, the cartoon. I don't remember where it was from, but I would watch it all the time and shit. Uh, I remember the intro to it. It was badass. Uh, I don't think Jenna Ortega is going to be a big role in this. She might just be like a side character or some ass. There's a wedding going on. Again, we see it in the trailer. Uh, Yeah, this is good. This is good. I'm giving this two thumbs up. Before the movie even comes out. And just because Gomer says that girl that's going to be... <laughs> that's going to be Beetlejuice's wife is going to come out naked in every movie. We're giving it two thumbs up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cheers to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'll spark it up. In fact, I'm going to spark it up for this next one. The thumbnail for the live show is actually going to be different than the thumbnail for the week show when I re-upload it tomorrow. Saturday, if you didn't watch it live. That's when I re-upload it. Live is on Friday nights. Re-uploads. Then it goes private. Re-uploads. It's fucking uh, Saturday mornings. 
uh, you miss out on all the fuck ups because <laughs> I edit stuff out and you miss out on all the music that we play on this channel old school stuff all right during the breaks when I go take a piss and then you also miss out on me talking to you and shit uh, a little bit you know, when we're not doing the show so just letting you know watch the live it's better because right now, if you're watching this on a Saturday, you're watching the edited pussy version, is what I call it. Ah, <laughs> so cheers to you. If you're watching the edited pussy version, cheers. But this Friday, it was released in theaters, was none other than a Mad Max saga. Furiosa! Yeah, I don't have an image right now because I forgot to upload one. Don't worry, I got plenty of footage here in a little bit when I get into it. But we're gonna get into my review of Furiosa. Right now, the critics are loving it. They're loving this shit. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but I don't know if it has a a, a, a fucking uh, an audience score yet. But the critics, for sure, have already rated it, and the critics are giving it. A 90% rating. And the audience so far, and it's only being out for, for I guess, it's Thursday night and all of Friday. 93% for the audience. Which is the first time that the critics and the audience have agreed on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I know I say that people in the edited pussy version miss out on stuff. Uh, but actually, the people in the live are missing out because in the edited pussy version, I'm going to actually have the shit for the Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Cheers to the edited pussy version. Ah, yeah. I don't have time. I work on Friday. I work every day, sons of bitches. I want to make the money. And Joe Biden doesn't pay enough. Anyways. So here's my review to it. I'll start from the beginning. Spoilers. Hopefully we don't get shut down. Hopefully I put enough bullshit images on top of it so we don't get banned. But here we go. Furiosa starts off with showing the origins of Furiosa. And Furiosa actually comes from this oasis in Africa. This whole story, Mad Max, I don't know. I mean, look. I, when I was a kid, I, Mac, Max, I think I saw Thunderdome, Thunder, thun, Thunderdome. I think that's the one where Whitney Houston comes out. I, for sure, I've seen that one start to finish. But, but the other two, Road Warrior and the first one, I've seen parts here and there. But I know the story, because obviously from seeing, you know, you know the story. Um... I don't know if it's supposed to it's supposed to be in Africa, but this is showing that it's in Africa where this is all taking place. And it zooms in to this river in Africa and everything's barren. The whole world is barren. And when it goes to Africa in this one little oasis, this is where Furiosa is born. And she has a sister and a family and, and they're picking and they see these marauders. Do you know these fucking, you know, apocalypse guys that found this place and they're like grabbing and stuff and 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 uh you know fruit and shit and uh they find the little girls and they kidnap furiosa and shit and the and furiosa uses a little whistle to call to to say that there does she needs help and her mother which she really looks and i can't show it here all the way you know but she really kind of looks like the little girl lauda that played lauda in logan it looks like her, like she's grown up. I don't, I can't confirm. I didn't look this up. I don't know all the details. You know what this channel is like. We do drugs and get high all fucking day. Look at, look at all my dreadlocks and shit. You want me to have all the information? Fuck you. Go to new rock stars if you want that pussy ass bullshit. It looks like this little girl from Logan. I don't know if it is. It might be. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But it looks like her. But that plays her mother. And they, they, she t they take Furiosa. And then her mother, and then they show the oasis where they're at, and it looks badass. They have solar panels, fucking technology. But even though everything's reverted, 
they have it all they have it all there solar panels technology food water shelter it looks badass but they take furiosa and the mother goes after her and this guy named dementis who is played by by crimps hence chris chris hemsworth thor um and by the way i fucking hated his character i'm not gonna lie uh i'll just tell you like this he, uh he does this weird voice where he does like yeah my name is yeah maybe i get that yeah he does a weird voice like that and it's like you're chris hansworth why are you talking like an ass but he talks like that and there's this part okay the only prosthetic on him I, if they were gonna go to try I, I, i'm sorry that i'm not showing it because i'm, I'm showing this as i'm talking did you'll see him in a little bit You've seen him in the trailers, you dick. I'm trying not to get banned on this channel, so don't complain. We get banned all the time for showing shit like this. But anyways, the only pro if they wanted to make him look different, why didn't they do what the A24 did with The Rock? Put all this stuff on him to really make him look different. The only prosthetic they put on his asshole was a nose. That's it. A nose. And there's literally, and it's in the very beginning. And I should have put it here, but I don't have time. I'm working. In the very beginning. All right. I just downloaded this last night. So I watched it this morning. I didn't have time to do this. It's in the very beginning in this scene. He looks up at the sun like that. And his nose is profile. And the sun rays are hitting him. And you can clearly see the sun going through the rays of the nose. And knowing that that's not his real nose. That there's no bone or cartilage there. You know what I'm saying? Like with like if you put a flashlight on the side of it, that's the way it looks when the sun's hitting it. And I'm like, ah, this is this this is pretty good quality. <laughs> they're getting better with the cameras they're sneaking into the theaters. This is really good quality. But this is still a camera stuck into a theater. And if I can tell, that's how shitty your prosthetics are. In a fucking cam version? Fuck you. <sighs> Anyways. I don't like Chris Hemsworth's character at all. Throughout the entire movie. And not because the character is hateful in his actions. No. Because Chris Hemsworth sucks at this character. And the director is an idiot for telling him that voice is perfect. Fuck you. And the prosthetic department should have gotten fired. The makeup department should get fired. For what they... they you make them look different. Now you put a nose. Fuck you. Motherfucker. Uh, anyways, I'll keep going with the story. He takes the little girl. Alright? And it's, he takes Furiosa and the mother goes after her. And he kills the mother in front of Furiosa. And then he t adopts Furiosa as his daughter. And Furiosa, from then on, doesn't speak at all. Everybody thinks she's a mute. Uh, but basically, Furiosa doesn't want them to know where the oasis is. And the, as they're, because they keep going into the desert, Furiosa's tattooing the stars that she's seeing in the sky. So that, that way, one day, if she ever escapes, she can go back to where she's from. Um, so this is a Furiosa origin story. So you all know. Uh, so yeah. So this fucking idiot, Chris Hensworth Dementis, uh, Dementis, that's his name, Dementis. Pendejo. <laughs> and <laughs> translated into Mexican is Pendejo. <laughs> that's his fucking name, Dementis. <laughs> Anyways, Dementis takes all of his biker gang to the Citadel where Immortal Joe lives, which is the guy we've seen in Fury Road with the uh, with the other pendejo. Uh what's his name? Uh, <laughs> uh I don't even remember. Well, my name is Bane. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Venom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways. Um, they take him to where Immort he goes over there to Immortan Joe, and he's like, All of my biker gang is gonna take over you, so give up, 
you son of a bitch. <laughs> and then Immortal Joe goes, we're going to pick one guy and send him out to fight all of you. Are you okay with that? And then we can decide. And the guys all like, the Chris Hensworth's all like, send that, send the skinny guy there. All right. The skinny guy, he fucking huffs all this paint. <laughs> You know those white guys you saw? If you saw the last movie, you know what I'm talking about. He huffs all this paint and grabs these sticks with these bombs and just dives down to them and explodes. <laughs> and the fucking, they fucking tell them, you see, all these guys are high on drugs and they're ready to die for all for us. So fuck you and get ready to die. <laughs> and so they start fighting and killing them <laughs> and shit. And it gets crazy. So then Immortal Joe, uh, Dementus, Chris Hemsworth, finds out that Immortal Joe is getting all the gasoline from a gasoline plant. And, uh, <laughs> and they figure out how to take over the gasoline plant. And then they bargain with them and say, oh, we'll, we'll form a truce. We'll give you gas, it, but you have to send the supplies, food and water. And every time you send us food and water, we'll send you back. In that tanker full of gas for all your shit. So they have peace for a long... Oh, and they also trade the little girl. Immortal Joel says, give me that little girl and we'll call it even. And we'll do that truce. So they do that truce. So Furiosa is now with Immortal Joel, which is now you know why. Some weird shit happens where Furiosa escapes, but stays within the compound, pretending to be a little boy. Yeah, <laughs> she pretends to be a little boy, you know, she shaves her head, looks like one of these kids, uh, bald little boys, and uh, but she's still living there under their protection, but she's not a little girl and she's not being raped and, and being forced to have children, you know, and, uh, and <laughs> she uh, becomes part of the convoy that goes to get gas and shit. And so, dude, all I'm going to say is there's some look. I love this movie. I'm with the credits in the audience. But I loved the last one. What was it called? Fury Road. I loved it. And a lot of motherfuckers out there shitted all over that movie. A lot. I'm going to tell you about this. A lot of this to me, and I have to see it in good quality. This is not in good quality. But a lot of this to me seems CGI. Whereas the last one seemed where a lot of it was real. A lot of it was real cars. A lot of it was real. This one looks like there's some stuff that's real, but it looks like a lot of a lot of it's CGI. And I think that's how they were able to make this even better than the last one. Because the last one, if you all know the story about this, the movie, is it took forever to make it. It even got canceled. And then they finally went back years later and started filming it again to finish it uh, when they got more money. So this was simpler to make. And I think it came out a little bit more badass with what they pulled off. I'll just put you like put it like that. Uh, but she joins the convoy that brings the gas and she meets this guy that I thought was Max. But no, it's some guy. Some guy who looks like him, whatever. And he teaches her. They fall in love. It's implied. They don't show sex or none of that. But it's implied that that's what happens. They fall in love and have sex and all that ass. Form a bond. But he teaches her everything. How to shoot. How to do everything. Because she's already she's already really skillful from the beginning. Because her mom had already taught her shit. But he teaches her more shit to survive. And they survive a lot of shit, you know. Uh, and basically, it's the factions that's happening. It's Dementis and who controls the gas and Immortal Joe who has the other supplies. And even though they have a truce, they, they the truth breaks off and they're trying to fucking kill each other and, 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 and fuck each other over. And Furiosa, uh, at the end of the... She, you know, she... Because she still wants... No, Furiosa only wants to kill Dementis because her trauma is that she saw her mother being killed in front of her and Dementis ordered it 
and then kept her as his daughter and, and kept forcing her to see him kill people and shit like that. And so she hates Dementis. And the whole theme of the movie is like, do you stay human or do you adapt and become what everyone else is? Just heart, and you use pain. And instead of breaking, you use the pain to fuel you and become stronger. And that's basically what the theme of the movie is. And Dementa says it at the end. But Furiosa, they have they have like a 40 year, I think they, they call it a 40 year, because it's like, it's an origin story, but it gets to a point where it, they're, they're two factions are finally going to fight and have a war. But they don't show you the war, they just told you the war went on for 40 years, or it went on for 40 days, 40 weeks, I don't know how long it says, I'm high and drunk. Uh, it went on for a long time. And then finally, it was towards the end of the war. And Furiosa finally goes after Dementis by herself and shit. Um, and yeah, she kills him. But even he tells her, like, do you have the guts to make it epic? So that you remember it forever. Because everybody kills somebody. Everybody die. Everybody dies here. And everybody kills somebody. This is the, the way of the world. But do you have the fucking balls to make it epic? And they put that in the trailer. It's in the trailer where Dementis says it. But do you have what it takes to make it epic? He's telling her, you're going to kill me, but are, are you going to make it epic? Are you going to torture me? Are you going to cut my head off? Something amazing that's going to be remembered forever. And uh, all she does is just go up to him and shoot him in the back of the head. Boom. Simple. And the legend goes, because from there, it's like the old man telling the story. And the old man says the legend goes and he shows different stories of how she killed him because people have all these stories. Oh, she did this to him and she did this and that's how she becomes a legend. And then the movie ends the way the other movie starts where she's helping the girls escape. She's kidnapping them from Dementes and they're leaving on the truck. That's the way the movie ends. And I was like, that's badass. So... I really, really loved this movie. I think overall, my biggest problem was that I really would prefer to know Immorta Joe origin. I want to know how the Citadel, how he, like, how did that group even end up there and became what it was? You know, we know there's an oasis out there near in Africa with a river. And also, how did all these people end up in Africa, for fuck's sakes? There's no black people in this movie. <laughs> and all these people are there in Africa. Uh, which is another crazy question that arises when I saw this movie, to be honest with you. Um, there was an amazing cameo. And I'll spoil it for you, motherfuckers. Fucking 50, 20 seconds, maybe, at the most. But when she escapes, when she escapes uh, after Immor Immortus Joe, no, not Dementus, Chris, Chris Hensworth. Chris Hensworth catches her and this guy that she's with, with the convoy. She catch, They catch them. Um, they tie the guy up in some motorcycles and they're dragging him around in circles or, while she's chained. So she watches him and they're dragging him around in circles and they let go of some dogs so the dogs can eat him while they're dragging him around. And Chris Hensworth is crazy. Dementis, he's the, the pendejo. He's crazy, and he just kind of stares at the at the at the at the, at the horizon, and uh, like the, it turns night. And everybody, because they're following his orders, they never stop doing what what he told them. So it keeps going. They keep fucking the guy, and the dogs keep running around. And it's nighttime already, and he's still there. And then he finally snaps out of it, and he's like, "Oh, he stop and whatever." And he turns around to look at the little girl. And the only thing that there is her hand. Her hand was already fucked up because he runs it over with a monster truck. Uh, I'm giving you spoilers. I don't give a fuck. He runs it over with the monster truck. So her hand was already fucked up. But I guess she ripped it off or chopped it off and escaped while he was there in his trance and nobody was looking. Um, and so while she's in the desert and passes out and then the immortal, immortal Jones people find her and take her back. While she's there, out on the top of the horizon. Max is there. Oh, with the original car from the movie. And you know that's supposed to be 
uh not fucking uh tom hardy that's supposed to be mel gibson but i'll tell you like this this is what i'm telling you this movie is really heavy cgi because i can tell you that this is all cgi the car that day that person's not even real that's a cgi fucking person uh, i'm zoomed in it was a little further away but he because i i can't show you the whole screen but he's looking down at Furiosa far away, just a little figure as she falls in the desert. And then a bunch of motorcycles come to pick her up. And that's uh, Immortan Joel's people. They come to rescue her and shit. Uh, and she gets a metal arm. It goes, you know, and then the war happens or whatever. But they have a Mad Max cameo for a couple of seconds. For those of you who know, if you know, you know, for you pussies, because a lot of motherfuckers not going to know. It's in there just for a little bit. Um, final verdict. Uh, two thumbs up. I'll tell you like this. And I'll, I'll put it like this. If you liked the last one, Fury Road with Tom Hardy, there is no reason why you shouldn't like this one. Um, this one looks a little faker. There's more CGI in this. In the last one, you could tell... That a lot of the stunts were real. A lot of them. Probably dangerous. Um, there's some real stuff here. But there's a lot of more CGI. And you could tell. Uh, it doesn't make it bad. Uh, that's just a visual uh, thing that was obvious there. Even that little kid there. It doesn't even look real. Uh, but. Uh, it's a, I like it. I like the last one. I like this one a lot. I still want to see an origin movie. I want to know why Immortan Joe, why, how he came to be, why he's there, and shit. That would be cool to see. Uh, this is good. Um, really good. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, cheers. Furiosa. And shit. All right. Let's move on to the real ass of the show. And it's none other than Mr. James Gunn, of course, and his DC ass. Because James Gunn has come out and posted on his threads or whatever the fuck is Insta media and shit. I'm too old to find all this new ass, so I just gotta show somebody else repost and shit. He puts, Happy anniversary to my favorite Kansas farmers, Ma and Pa Kent, who will be played by Pruitt Taylor Vince, an actor I've wanted to work with since I saw him in Jane Mangold's Heavy in 1995. And the delightful Neva Howell, who I've never seen, and I don't know who the fuck this old lady is. But I, I like how she looked. That's what he's saying, basically. My and Pa Kent's first appearance in Superman number one was in May 18th, 1939. Because I'm a nerd, and I gotta tell you all these facts. And Clark's parents had a few names, until they were formally named... John and Mary Kent in Superman number 53 in 1948. A retelling of Superman's origin story. Jonathan and Martha, as their former names were established later. Later. In the comic book series. So here's the last fuck you to the Snyder fans. Fuck you, James Gunn. Fuck you back. That's what all the Snyder fans are saying. Because he basically just confirmed that he's saying, I ain't gonna do motherfucking Zack Snyder's Jonathan Martha. Oh, Martha. He's the same thing as Martha Wayne. Martha Kent. He says, fuck you, Snyder fans. I'm gonna do it old school like in 1948. And their names are going to be John and Mary. American names. None of these 
Presbyterian shit that came over on the Mayflower and ass motherfucking white settlers that were here from the beginning before the Native Americans. Fuck you. Cause Jesus walked in America too. It's in the good book. Jehovah's Witness, look it up. John John Smith, it's all there. An angel appeared, gave him gold tablets, then he hit him in the woods. No one's ever found them, but somehow it's true. Don't worry about it. Believe it. James Gunn believes it. And so should you. Fuck you. Zack Snyder. That's what James Gunn is saying. <sighs> Fuck you, James Gunn. Why you got against Martha? Why you gonna come on and change it to Mary? Huh? Uh, Jonathan, why didn't you just change it to Jesus instead of John? What's wrong with Jonathan? You dick. Son of a bitch. He wants to be all biblical. John and Mary, Mary and John, Paul, Simon and shit. Fuck you, James Gunn. You Protestant dickhead. You're ruining Superman. And you're pissing off the Snyder fans. You dumbass. That could be more money for you and Warner. You're fucking it up by changing it. Say, fuck you to Snyder fans. You idiot. You wonder why this movie's not going to be a hit. Make no money. Because this dumbass is insulting his audience. That's why. Fuck you, James Gunn. We're done with your ass. And we're moving on to the real ass. And boy, fellas. <laughs> I hope you're ready for this. I really mean ass in this one. Because apparently Disney theme parks have begun hiring local dancers to be their uh, princesses and fucking puppeteers or whatever. The people in the suits of the fucking whatever. <laughs> Here's the last girl, Helen Purr. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, god damn, where'd they find this girl at the local strip club? <laughs> Talk about, uh, what did this girl do to get this job is all I gotta say. <laughs> Parents were a little concerned and shocked and they decided, let me take a video of this and post it on my IG because... This seems a little out of place at Disney World and shit. <laughs> the guy at HR is doing all the hiring. He's like the happiest motherfucker there. He's like, oh, I hired all the best girls. <laughs> Casting couch. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> but you know what? Here's what no one's talking about, the, the real fucking issue here. What if? What if that's a dude? Oh, yeah! <laughs> hey, you never know nowadays. I'm just saying, you know, if you watch AEW or used to when it first started, Sonny Kiss, remember him? He had moves just like this. Every time he wrestled. Oh, yeah. He kind of had a figure just like this. Hey, you know what? This is in Florida. And that son of a bitch doesn't have a job. Maybe that is Sonny Kiss. That kind of looks like his ass. I'm not going to lie. Holy fuck. It moves just like Sonny Kiss. Oh, my God. This is Sonny Kiss. Oh, shit. <laughs> That would be badass, you know? He'd probably make more money here than he would be at AW, it's all I'm saying. He'd probably get mad tips from all the dads and shit. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? I mean, do you think this is the kind of people uh, that should be hired at Disney parks nowadays? I do. I think we need Goofy and Ma Donald and Minnie and Mickey. I mean, all the imagine all the furries you would attract to your Disney parks. You would have tons of furry furries coming up and fucking just, you know, like 
You're posting up and shit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> this, they, or them. Because I'm telling you, this could be a guy easily. Nowadays, this could easily be a guy. Uh, this, they, or them is very talented at what they do. And uh, they definitely earned this job. Uh, regardless of what they had to do to get it, they earned it. Oh, yeah, I was all gonna say, cheers to Disney Parks! I'm kind of sad I don't have children, because I would love to take them to see this ass. Or just, you know, hey, go over there, ride this ride. I'm gonna go hang out with Elastigirl and shit, and do the, do the wiggle with it. Do the wiggle with it. Oh, yeah! <laughs> cheers! <laughs> All right, all right, enough of this. Enough of this ass shaking. <laughs> oh, some ass that came out today that we actually spoiled a year ago with he who should not be named on this channel when we used to be a podcast because we're a broadcast now, motherfuckers. You better recognize it's different. All those other channels are in the past. We're the future. We do broadcast, motherfuckers. So remember that. We're the first ones to ever do that. Fuck you. All you other pussies with your podcasts. Anyways, we reported this a year ago. But apparently the leak is out again. About Venom 3, The Last Dance. And they're saying that, yes, the bad guy will be Toxin. Which is that yellow one down there. Um, No, not the one in the middle. The one over here on the on the the one down here on the left side, the farther left side. That's Toxin, and it's gonna be uh Wahlberg, not Marky Wahlberg, Donnie Wahlberg, the motherfucker who's married to to, to Jenny McCarthy, because the symbiote got in him in Venom Part Two. You saw at the end of the movie, and he's gonna give birth to more symbiotes. It's not gonna. Excuse me. All of a sudden, all this gas came out of my mouth. Kind of like the ass that's coming out of my mouth is repeating what Sony's ass is saying. So it's a bunch of gas. I mean, this is perfect. This is just ass that I'm saying. So anyways. Toxin is going to give birth to more symbiotes. And you're going to get not Riot, but you're going to get the other Chaos. And the green one, and the purple one, and the brown one. And there are going to be symbiotes. And he's going to give birth to a, another red and yellow one female. Who is actually going to be... The love interest of Eddie Brock, and she's gonna get the symbiote, and then she, either he she's gonna team up with him or she's gonna fight him for a little bit and be on the bad guy's side. But these symbiotes are gonna be loose fighting Venom, and at the same time, Chai I don't remember his name is is the guy who plays Baron Mordo in the MCU, Baron Mordo. All right, from the Doctor Strange, remember. Chai, the black dude. I, I don't know his name. Chai, Chai, I don't know his real name. I just call him Chai. The my, my, my motherfucking boy right there. The motherfucker been underrated actor for a while already. The motherfucker should have won an Oscar already. But he he has the wrong fucking uh, agent. He's not giving the right roles and shit. But that motherfucker is going to be now, even though he was Baron Mordo. In the fucking uh, MCU, he's gonna be in the Sony verse, and he's actually gonna be one of the guys in this new team called the Jury. And the Jury in the, in the Venom comic books, which I have over there, I have the entire fucking Venom comic books over there. Lethal Protector, motherfucker. I, all this shit that you're seeing right here, I have it. Uh, but this is the Jury, and there's a team of motherfucking humans with like Iron Man suits that uh try to catch the symbiotes so venom's gonna have to be fighting the bad guy symbiotes and at the same time trying to fight the government symbiotes or not the government the government iron man's and shit but like we said a year ago and it sounds like it is true and we said a year ago this is the lamest bullshit ever venom Will, from, from coming back from the MCU, because the last time we saw him, remember, he was in the MCU. He didn't know why he was there. There was Iron Man and Venom. He was talking to a bartender. 
he got sacked back into his universe. When he does that, because of the multiversal connection, the symbiote sees the memories of the symbiotes in the other universes. And in the other universes, he sees that Spider-Man always kills Venom. And he tells Eddie Brock, Hey, in the multiverse, there's this guy named Peter Parker. And he has powers like us, like a spider. And he kills us. We better find him in our world. And shit. Before he kills us. And Eddie's all like, well, that sounds crazy, but okay, let's go look for this guy. But when they find him in Eddie Brock's universe, in this universe, the Sonyverse, Peter Parker's 10 years old. And the reason why is because this is a continuation of Madam Web. When in Madam Web, Peter Parker was being born as a baby. Madam Web was a failure. They're still going to try to connect it, which is lame. So there's going to be a 10-year-old Peter Parker that Eddie Brock finds, and the symbiote's all like, let's eat his brains, Eddie. And fucking Tom Hardy's going to be like, he's just a little boy. We can't eat his brains. He doesn't even have powers. And the symbiote's are like, but someday he will. He's going to be the guy who's going to kill us. But Eddie Brock becomes his friend and looks after the kid. And here's the shitty part that Sony always got to fuck up. Because they did it in Madam Web a bunch of times. A bu throughout the whole movie. And they're doing it here. Where all of a sudden, here we go. Get ready for this. Peter fucking Parker is allergic to spider bites. And an actual non-radioactive spider, a normal spider, bites Peter Parker. And Eddie Brock has to take him to the hospital. To take care of him. While this is happening... The evil symbiote, Toxin, and the other symbiotes are trying to, because they also, because remember, if you know the lore, symbiotes are a hive mind. So whatever one knows, the other ones are all of a sudden going to know about it. So because Venom's, Venom traveled the multiverse and found out that there's a Peter Parker and he kills the symbiotes in the other multiverses, now this one knows it, and he wants to kill Peter Parker too before he turns into Spider-Man and kills the symbiotes. And that's what the movie is. It's basically Terminator. It's the same shit we talked about. It's the same shit. It's Madam Web, except with Peter Parker in it, now officially in it. And it's going to be a CGI fuckfest with a bunch of symbiotes and Venom. And Iron Man's fighting while there's a, a 10 year old Peter Parker in the middle of everything saying, What the fuck's going on? And it's called Venom The Last Dance. Sony. Ass. I had to take a good chug after that ass because it hurt my throat doing that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Yes, it's horrible. It's very horrible. What Sony is coming up with. Um, I'm not happy with... I've never been happy with any of the Venom stuff because... How do you even do Venom without Spider-Man? You know, it's it's never made any fucking sense to me. To me. But, since we're talking about sense, but it is Sony, and that's expected. But since we are talking about stuff that's connected, because the symbiote is, obviously was in the MCU, and then Venom got transported back to his shitty Sony-verse. Along with Michael Keaton's Vulture, which makes no fucking sense. And Morbius. Oh my god, like, I don't even want to get into the Sony-verse. 
Because it makes no sense. Nothing. Ugh. Oh my god. Anyways, back to it. Shit that still doesn't make any sense. And that somehow is connected. Is that the symbiotes. When Venom got transported back to his shitty verse. Part of the symbiote stayed in the MCU. We all remember that. All of us. So there's a piece of the symbiote. Hive mind. In the MCU. And this is supposed the plot leaks for the Spider-Man 4 MCU slash Sony movie. And that is that we're going to have the villains of Shocker, Bukim Woodbine, which I love. This actor is amazing. I love him in anything, any movie he's ever been in. This guy's badass. I think he was in Panic Room with Jared Leto. He was badass in it. But he's going to be back as Herman Schultz. The Shocker. The second Shocker. The first one got killed. He was at Discount uh, Tom Hardy. Motherfucker. The, the Vulture killed right away in the first. Anyone else have anything to say? Now we're good, boss. Fuck that guy. <laughs> That's what they all worried about. Yeah, we're good. Don't worry. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he just disintegrated him. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, he's going to come back as a shocker. And hopefully Kevin Feige finally puts him in an actual suit that looks like the shocker. Because in the original movie, they had filmed an entire scene where they robbed a bank as the shocker. And there he is. He was wearing the, shoot, the suit. And I don't, I don't think that was supposed to be Bukim. I think that was supposed to be the first Shocker. I think that was supposed to be fucking uh, Discount Tom Hardy. I don't remember his name. If you all remember, put it down down there. But it was that guy who played the first... There was two Shockers in the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. Uh, the first one was... I call him Discount Tom Hardy because he looks just like Tom Hardy. Except he's not big. He's skinny. But his face looks just like him. Um... But Bukim is going to be back as a shocker. And one great thing that they're saying about these leaks that I'm happy about. Is that we're getting Matt Gargan finally back. Finally addressed. God damn it. From the very first movie. They teased the scorpion. Almost. Almost. Eight years have gone by. And you still haven't even said nothing about this guy. He was the guy who was making a deal on the boat when Spider-Man fucked up the deal when the when the FBI was there. And he had to try to tie the boat up and then Iron Man came and saved the day and then Iron Man got mad at him and took away his suit. He was... He was the guy there, and he was the scorpion, Matt Gargan. And he even had a tattoo of the scorpion. And they teased him in the end of credit scene that led nowhere. God damn it. Finally, he will be the scorpion in this new movie. And they're saying that the scorpion and the shocker, uh... The Scorpion and the Shocker will be the Kingpin's lackeys. They will be funded and supplied by Vicente de Onofrio's Kingpin in this movie to thwart Spider-Man or stop him. So wherever they're getting their technology or their new suits, and I'm, I'm telling you, Bukim is probably going to look more like the comic book Shocker then this, and I'm glad they never showed this in the movie. This was filmed. This was scenes were filmed. I'm glad they never showed this because this looks like ass. Uh, it really does. But I think Feige's probably gonna make a badass shocker. I'm worried about the scorpion. Because how do you make scorpion into live action, bro? Scorpion or rhino in reality? Sony tried rhino, and even though their idea was practical. Make a machine. It looked shitty. 
How do you make Scorpion? Because in the comic books, in the comic books originally, they use this it's like a mutant. They use the machine. They enhance him. They put DNA of a scorpion in him and they fuse him and shit. And he becomes more ripped as fuck and bigger and taller. But then he gets more aggressive and shit. And they give him this suit that has that shit. I mean, how do you do that in live action, bro? It's almost impossible. All Shocker is, and they already showed the Shocker. It's just a guy with the things on his, on his fucking hands. Everything else is just a costume. He doesn't have powers. It's just the shit on his hand. And we saw it in the first movie. And he looked badass doing the shit. He looked badass. So all he needs is just the rest of the costume. He's ready for it. How the fuck do you translate Scorpion into live action? Is my biggest worry here. I'm excited. Scorpion's one of my favorites. I remember I used to have the Scorpion toy. I used to have the Scorpion toy. Uh, he's one of my favorites. But how do you translate that into live action? Scary. Well, here's where it gets Sony-ish. Like we said earlier, the symbiote was left in, a part of it was left in the MCU. And because it saw Spider-Man on the TV, the symbiote from Mexico goes to New York. It travels. It makes its way to New York. Trying to reach Spider-Man. But it doesn't reach Spider-Man. It latches on to this motherfucker. It's gonna latch on to Matt Gargan. And this is what I'm thinking they're doing. After Spider-Man beats... Spider-Man's gonna beat... Shocker. And he's gonna go to jail or whatever. But Spider-Man's also gonna beat the Scorpion. And Matt Gargan. Because this is the second time Spider-Man has beat him. He beat him in the first movie. And he sent his ass to jail when they were in the boat. And now he beat him when he has superpowers and a suit or whatever Marvel's going to give him. And it's going to be so full of hatred and anger towards Spider-Man. This little thing is going to attach to him. And he will be the MCU's Venom. They're skipping Eddie Brock in the MCU. And they're going straight to Matt Gargan. Matt Gargan is going to get the symbiote first. The symbiote will latch on to him and will turn him into Venom after, after Spider-Man already beats him as the Scorpion. So, beginning of the movie is probably going to be Spider-Man fighting Shocker and Scorpion and beating them. The rest of the movie is showing the symbiote getting to New York, latching on to probably Matt Gargan in jail, Matt Gargan escaping as Venom. And fucking Peter having to fight Venom in this next movie. You know what's crazy is that Matt Gargan's version of Venom, I'm showing you here the comic books, he is scarier looking than regular Venom. And he has the tail too. He has the fucking tail like a scorpion. <laughs> and he's fucking scary looking in the comic books. I think he's more fearful. Lee Price is even crazier. Lee Price's Venom is even crazier because Lee Price was a guy who was a ranger in the army. And I think Lee Price has lost his legs. Or, god damn it, I don't even remember. I have it. I have those. Uh, the entire arc. The Lee Price Venom arc. But I think he lost his legs or something. Um, And the Venom symbiote, when it attaches to Lee Price, the Venom, because at that point, he, the Venom symbiote had been on um, Flash Thompson. Had been on Flash Thompson. And had turned good. He was Agent Venom. So he wasn't evil anymore. So when he latched on to Lee Price, which was an ex-military special ops, um, the, the symbiote didn't like Lee Price. It didn't like the host. But Lee Price is like, you fucking listen to me, you motherfucker. We're killing people. You know, 
Because Lee Price was a killing machine. The army trained him. The rangers trained him and shit. Special ops. Uh, so it's fucking crazy that that Scorpion's going to end up being the first Venom in the MCU. Matt Gargan. At the same time, we're getting Scorpion and Venom in the same movie. Which is what is worrying me. This might just be another Spider-Man 3. Where Sony forced Raimi to put Venom into this. Where Sony is forcing Kevin Feige. Put Venom into this. <laughs> who knows? Uh, who knows? But. At the end of this. At the end of this. Peter. After defeating the Scorpion, Lee Pry, uh, Matt Gargan, Venom, the symbiote will latch onto Peter. And throughout the whole movie, since you've seen Peter being alone in a world where no one remembers him. He has no family, no friends, no superhero allies. It's just him by himself. He is more alone and sad than ever. And at the end, when he gets the and that's the way he's gonna look. They've already said it's gonna look just like the Sony one. And this is the concept art that Sony had did. Uh so this is probably what it's gonna look like. He's gonna attach to it and he's gonna love it because he feels lonely and sad. And this thing's gonna make him feel happy. And that's how the first, because this is going to be a trilogy. They're going to, the first Spider-Man 4 is going to end, like. Where he finally feels like, oh, now I'm powerful. And that's how it's going to end, where he's the new black Spider-Man. And this will lead him to be the new black Spider-Man in Secret Wars. When he joins the multiversal team. With his Peter 1 and Peter 2 brothers. And... Toby Maguire is going to warn him when he sees him wearing this. He's going to say, hey, Peter, I've already encountered this thing. You need to take it off. And of course, this guy's going to be like, ah, fuck you. Like, no, he's fine. Don't worry about this. This is another universe. This one's different. Don't worry about it. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, and that's what's going to happen. That's what Feige's doing. That's what the plan is for Spider-Man. Uh, moving on in the MCU. With uh, Tom Holland. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Here's another spoiler that just came out. I don't know how. And I don't know why. But Marissa Tomei. Is coming back as Aunt May. For part 4. It's probably a flashback. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. It's probably going to be a flashback. Fucking uh, Peter remembering a flashback of when his aunt was alive and when he, everyone knew him. And shit. That's just what I think. But that, yes, she's coming back for the next movie. Mm -hmm. So this sounds crazy and, and it sounds hopeful. But it is Sony. We can never, ever forget that. That it is Sony. And never forget, because they're coming up with more ass. And their actual ass rumors is that Sony wants to take advantage of the multiverse M MCU is doing. And they're going to do their own multiverse saga. But it's going to be the Spider-Verse live, even though it's already in the animation one. They're basically going to do their own live action spider-verse and they're bringing back you heard it here first now you heard it here a long time we've been talking about this for fucking years already they're bringing back toby mcguire and andrew garfield since the fucking no way home came out sony already had the plan they're bringing him back and it's gonna be a spider-man multiverse live action movie uh, set up because obviously Tobey Maguire and probably Andrew Garfield 
are going to come out of Secret Wars. If not, at the very least, Tobey Maguire is in Secret Wars for the MCU. But Sony, apart from that, they're doing their own thing where they're going to have their own side adventure in their multiverse with these two guys back in it. And here is the first details, according to the leakers, which are currently being pursued by Kevin Feige and the lawyers. So you know the right. They're right. And they've always been right. The past three years we've been doing this channel. According to the leakers, they're saying that the Sony plan is to say something along the lines of when Doctor Strange did the spell in the multiverse for everyone to forget who Peter Parker was, these guys went back to the universes and found out that everyone forgot who Peter Parker was in their world too. So Tobey Maguire who was married with children, with Mary Jane. All of a sudden, the children don't know him. Mary Jane doesn't know him. No one knows him in his universe. And Andrew Garfield, which they never explained, no one knows him in his universe either. And so they're fucked. That's what this... They're going to have to come back and try to fix all this. That's where Sony is so far, the leakers have said is in their story. Ah, and this is, what, this is what the problem with Sony is that they're just, just so fucking greedy and they want to jump on the ass wagon right away to try to get some of that money. That they don't realize they're just jumping on too quick. They're coming on too strong. They're about to bust a load before the bitch even fucking gets on it. You know what I'm saying? You're fucking up. I, I I am very fearful about these new developments that are coming out from these spoilers that are saying this. I hope they, they give us more information because this is really, really vague. And when you give me vague, I see a lot of negativity. All right. There's a lot of negativity in my life. So that's all I'm going to project. God damn it. All right. We're done with the Sony ass and the Peters. Let's finish it off with the Marvel dick. And I told you, it was only a matter of time. And uh, it was only a matter of time before motherfuckers did this. But some nerds finally showed us some Photoshop art of what The Rock could look like as Apocalypse in the MCU. And he looks amazing. Both of them look amazing. God damn it. I really want The Rock as Apocalypse. He's perfect. He's the right. His head is shaped exactly the right fucking shape. He looks mean enough right now that he's all roided out as the fucking final boss. Just put some armor on him. You didn't even need armor. Just put some a little bit of shoulder pads. That motherfucker's already big. He's Apocalypse. Any actor will look like a shrimp next to him. You don't even need to CGI him. He's perfect. It's shit. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway, uh, can you tell I didn't have much of a show? I'm just showing you uh, <laughs> Photoshop art from motherfuckers. <laughs> Nah, I, I did say it's only a matter of time and I can't wait to see some of this art. These motherfuckers did a good job on this fucking shit for The Rock. The motherfucker on the left actually showed all the images he used. He showed the image of The Rock and actually the thing going like that. That's like from the Green Hulk going like that. Eric Bana, the original Hulk going like that. Um, and a bunch of he showed every image he used to make this. And I was like, that's a lot of work. Because he does a lot of cropping and deleting and then fading and then everything, man. Blend it in. This other one, I don't remember where that... That might just be AI. Uh, or that... I don't know where that... I, I can't remember. That might be... Was that the Scorpion King? No, that might be AI because his chin's too fucking thick. Uh, but it looks good, bro. I think The Rock will look good as Apocalypse. 
and I can't see any after they mentioned it I can't see anyone else playing Apocalypse in the MCU except for The Rock they fucked us over if the, the, the rumor or whatever I hope they choose him he's perfect either that or they're gonna end up choosing the motherfucker that chose to play Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat Part 2 that guy's huge the big Russian fucking Sub Sub Sumerian motherfucker you know just wait till you see that shit. Anyways, we're finishing it off. Giving you the, the final uh, ejaculation for you tonight. <laughs> and it's none other than the Blonde Phantom. Because we said... Fuck you. Sorry about that. We said last week... That Marvel and Disney Plus was going to adapt a show about the Blonde Phantom, which is some secretary of the Secretary of State or the United Nations, some chick that works there for someone important who goes there and, and, and she overhears shit and she wants to be a hero. So she puts on the skimpy dress and a Robin mask and grabs a fucking nine millimeter gun and she goes out and fights crime for jujitsu and ass. Uh, but anyways, Marvel and Disney are making it, and I said, well, they talked recently to Sydney Sweeney and her sexy little ass, and I said, what if Sydney Sweeney's gonna be this little blonde girl in the blonde phantom and shit? Well, now they're saying the rumor is that the person that Marvel actually approached for this specific role, meaning, if this is true, then Sydney Sweeney was approached for something else. But if this is true, they're saying that the person who was actually approached to be this character on the Disney Plus series is none other than the great Taylor Swift. Everyone thinks she's going to be Dazzler in Deadpool, and she's not. I am convinced she's going to be a Deadpool variant as Lady Deadpool. Probably with a mask and never take her mask off. Never. It'll just be like one of those cameos where they just tell you that was her, even though she never took the mask off. But she'll be Lady Deadpool. My guess. And probably this is right. That Kevin Feige says, well, you'll be Lady Deadpool in a cameo, but this is the character that you'll be in the MCU. This, because this would get more views on Disney Plus than Sydney Sweeney. Billion dollar S, Taylor Swift would get Disney Plus more views and more subscriptions than horny, big-boobed Sydney Sweeney. Let's be honest. Sydney Sweeney would only bring out these 40-year-old, gray-haired motherfuckers that live at home by themselves, drink beer and smoke weed and shit, watch broadcasts on a Friday night. That's the only motherfuckers that come out and watch Sydney Sweeney. But when you talk about Taylor Swift, we're talking about everybody in the world. All right? The nuns, the prayer to Jesus, would watch Taylor Swift right after praying to Jesus. And that's the truth. Aborigines in the jungle don't even know what Jesus are. They'll watch Taylor Swift. That's the truth. Motherfuckers like me would watch Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, Taylor Super Saiyan Joku! Live. Oh yeah, Taylor, Taylor Swift! <laughs> this is a rumor, but I think this is true. This makes more sense than my theory about Sydney Sweeney being the fucking, the bitch that had gotten. It makes more swift. It makes more sense. I was more swift. It just makes more swift that it's swifty. 
in here. In the MCU. And shit. Ah, uh, she's got nice hips. She got nice hips. I bet her pussy's like, well, I mean, you know, it's, you never know. You never know. Oh, well. Ah, she does like him dumb. Big, dumb, six foot five, 300 pound, dumb motherfucker. This is what she likes. She just likes a lot of weight on her, fellas. You don't have to be that, that tall. As long as you got a lot of weight on you to dump it on her. She's good for it. Oh, Terrence, Terrence Ray. <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough of Taylor Swiftness and the Blonde Phantom and the MCU. And I think I have done enough ranting for tonight. Let's be honest. So, I'm going to leave y'all motherfuckers with a little bit of life advice. Take home. At this time, it's gonna be a little bit more than life advice. This is like one of those like old wives tales, that shit that your grandmother tells you to survive whenever you're fucked in life. It's shit. I'm giving you some shit that might save you one day. All right, so get ready for this. This is some shit I learned a long time ago. All right, if you're ever lost in the woods, in the jungle. Well, I don't know about the jungle. I've never been in the jungle. This my may or may not apply for the jungle. Oh, and by the way, read the read the fucking warning before you fucking listen to it. But anyways, this may or may not apply if you are in the jungle or not. But definitely you're in the fucking woods. You better take this to heart, you dumbass. You might survive. You ever lost in the woods? And you need to find your way north. We should, you should always go north because if you go north, you're gonna find a river or homes or a strip club because they're usually far away from town. So north is where you're gonna find this ass. If you ever need to find your way north, just remember this old shaman, old uh, Aztecan, uh, apparition uh Japalipalan, uh, fucking old wives myth that I heard. And it works, trust me. The wood always grows. No, wait, hang on. I'm saying it wrong. Sorry. All drunk and high. If we're ever lost in the woods, in the woods, not the desert, there's gotta be trees. Remember this to find north. The bark always grows on the outside of trees. And as long as you see that, then you know you're going north. Cheers! We'll see you next week, motherfuckers. Whoa, back. Oh, 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 oh. We're live. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh? <laughs>